a war? Minato's head snapped to look at his son, on guard. Kind of. Shikamaru rubbed his neck before he sighed. What nations are involved? Hashirama asked worriedly. It is not going to involve any nations if we have a say in it. It will however involve Madara Uchiha, Abito Uchiha, Black and White Setsu, and the goddess Kagaya. Trust us, they can and will destroy the five nations if they get the chance. We are here to stop them before they can. Naruto said, his voice dark and firm. Madara Uchiha ha? Hashirama ran a hand over his face as he absorbed the words. Abito? Abito is dead Naruto. Minato spoke up confused, his voice sad as he spoke of his dead student. He did not die that day, he was found by Madara Uchiha and Zetsu. His mind was warped and filled with hatred, he unfortunately saw Kakashi kill Rin and he was overcome by her death without knowing the reason behind it. He let himself be completely taken over by Madara and Zetsu's teachings. He is still in there and can be reached, but it will be difficult. Naruto explained gravely. If the Abito I knew is still there then I will get him back. Minato said, eyes flashing showing his determination. Now I know where you get it from. Shikamaru whispered to Naruto, the blonde just elbowed the Nara. This is going to be an uncover operation, no nation is to find out about what is going to happen in the next hours. In time they will become the allied shinobi forces, but I rather it not happen during a war. Naruto made eye contact with each person in the room seeing agreement and some confusion to his words there. Hiruzen Sarutobi, my student. Is he here? Tobarama spoke up suddenly. Ah, GG? He is still back in the village with Erosenin and Bachan, I believe he is currently training Sasuke. Naruto said and Tobarama relaxed hearing his student was alive and well. Speaking of Sasuke, don't worry about him anymore Itachi. He knows the truth about the Yachiha massacre and is training to get stronger so you can come home to him, so you don't have to be a missing nin to protect him any longer. Naruto explained, Itachi blinked in shock at Naruto's words before he smiled a bit and Minato growled at the mention of a massacre and muttered under his breath about Danzo. You should get the others, we'll meet you at the battlefield. Shikamaru spoke up and Naruto nodded as he pulled out a three-pronged kunai with a Horatian seal on the handle. He handed it to Shikamaru who attached it to his belt beside Asuma's trench knives and stepped away from the blonde. I'll meet you at the battlefield Shika. Naruto gave Shikamaru an ANBU salute before he disappeared in a flash of yellow and orange. That was the Horatian. Kushina gasped as he looked at her husband who was staring at the three-pronged kunai on Shikamaru's belt. Naruto learned it? Minato asked Shikamaru. Not only did he master the Horatian, he mastered the Raisingan in a week and then perfected it by adding in his Churka nature futon. Shikamaru said bragging about his Hokage. Naruto. Minato smiled bright and proudly. Konan-san, could you bring down the shrine? We need to get moving. Shikamaru turned to the aim woman who nodded and held her arms up. The shrine around the group turned to pieces of paper that reattached themselves to her outstretched arms, the former Hokages looking impressed. Shikamaru then led the group down a path in the forest towards the battlefield. Who did Naruto go to get? Kushina asked as she held hands with her husband, happy she could be near him once more. The rest of the Jinshurikis. Shikamaru said and chuckled internally at the frozen forms of those around him. The rest of the Jinshurikis? You mean? Tobarama trailed off. All nine of them, it will be a sight to see them all fighting together. I mean watching Naruto and Kurama fighting in their shroud is a sight to behold, but the others should also have mastered their own shrouds by now. Shikamaru rambled enjoying this a bit too much as he herded the group further down the road. How? Each tailed beast is locked within a Jinshuriki with no way to communicate, more so the beasts will be in a rage if they are released. Mito spoke up, speaking from experience as the first Jinshuriki for the Kyubi. A lot has changed Uzumaki Senju-sama. 
Shikamaru said respectfully. The tail beasts are on our side and each one has a relationship with their Jinshuriki, just be glad they are on our side this time around. What do you mean by this time around? Itachi spoke up, mind worrying. When we finish this battle Naruto and I will explain everything, now stand back. Shikamaru pulled the kunai from his belt and threw it into the ground a far bit from the stopped group as the seal started to heat up and glow. The group had stopped on a cliff overlooking a barren field, the same field the final battle had taken place in Shikamaru and Naruto's timeline. It was fitting that they would win once more in this place. The seal flashed and a dust cloud appeared as nine figures suddenly appeared in blurs of colors. I think I may throw up. A young female voice made its way to the assembled group. Naruto, I am going to give you a first-hand experience of my sand burial. Gara growled. Ah, come on you guys. A group oration wasn't that bad. Naruto laughed only to get growls in return as the dust settled. Naruto walked back towards the other group of ninjas with a huge smile on his lips, a small version of Kurama sat on the blonde's head with his nine tails flared up behind him. We're back, oh let me introduce everyone. Well first off this is Kurama the nine tails. Say hi Kurama. Naruto pointed at the red fox on his head. Bite me. Kurama deadpanned, digging his claws into the blonde's head, amused at the horrified looks he was getting from the previously deceased shinobis. He's not a people person. Naruto explained, not wincing at stinging on his scalp. Naruto, are you sure having the nine tails out like this is a good idea? Kushina asked, worried for her son's safety and confused at how it was possible that there was outside of the seal like this. It's fine, Kasan, trust me on this. Kurama is just a big fuzzball, and he loves me. Naruto sang, poking Kurama's cheek. I will bite your finger off you brat. Kurama growled only for Naruto to laugh. Kushina still looked worried until Minato put his hand on her shoulder. I trust Naruto, and if he trusts the Nine Tails then I trust. Kurama. Thank you for taking care of my son. Minato turned a smile on the Nine Tails. Kurama huffed and flared his tails in acknowledgement. This is Hashirama Senju the Shodai Hokage and his wife and first Jinshuriki of Kurama Mito Uzumaki. Naruto pointed at the two for the benefit of the Jinshurikis. Next is the Naidame Hokage Tobarama Senju, then we have the Yandame Hokage Minato Namikaze my Tusan and my Kasan Kushina Uzumaki the Nine Tails Jinshuriki before me. Over here we have Itachi Uchiha, then that is Nagato Uzumaki, Konan and Yahiko of AIM who are all on our side now. Finally we have Shikamaru Nara, some of you may know him. Naruto finished the introduction. Hey there Shikamaru. He waved at the Nara while Gara came over and clasped forearms with the Nara with a smile on his lips. We can introduce ourselves Naruto. Yagura spoke up with the others agreeing. Whatever you say, midget. Naruto smirked. I am Yande Mizukage, remember? I am not a midget. Yagura's eyebrow twitched. You should know you can't pull rank with me. Naruto shot back smirking and the Mizukage threw his hands up in defeat. We will start with one and work out way to nine, understood? Gara spoke up. Whatever you say, Ogodame Kazekage. Naruto Mach bowed before he dodged a swipe of sand from the redhead. I am Sabaku no Gara of Suna, the future Godain Kazakage. Gara intoned as the huge tail of Shikaku moved from its place draped around the redhead's shoulder and the head of the one tail appeared. I am the mighty Shikaku the one tail. Shikaku tried to roar, but it came out more high-pitched and squeaky. Oh so mighty Shikaku! Kurama roared with laughter from Naruto's head. Gara just sighed as he was used to Shikaku by this point. I'm Yujido Ni of Kumo. Yujido bowed, her respect for Kages kicking in from her Jonin training. I am Matatabi, the two tails. Matatabi purred out from her place by Yujido's feet, her two blue tails weaving in and around Yujido's ankles. I am Yagura of Kiri and the Yande Mizukage. Yagura inclined his head to the past Kanoha Hokages. 
I am Isabuth the Three Tails, Yugura's partner. The turtle beast also nodded his head to the past Hokages from his place on Yagura's forearm where he was resting. Name's Rashi of IWA and this guy is Son Goku the Four Tails. Rashi said between puffs of smoke as he had been smoking when Naruto had come to bring them to battle, the Son Goku was puffing away by Rashi's feet. I am Han of IWA, pleased to meet you all. Han didn't remove his hand from the front of his kimono as it was habit to keep it there. I am Han's partner, the Five Tails Kokuo. Kokuo was resting on the bent elbow of Han's right arm. Yudakata, a missing nin from Kiri. Yudakata sent a glance at the Mizukich who just rolled his eyes and waved his hand dismissively about Yudakata being a missing nin. I am Saiken, the Six Tails. Saiken introduced himself between blowing his bubbles from Yudakata's shoulder. Nice to meet you all. I'm Fu of Taki. This is Chome the Seven Tails and my best friend in the whole world. Fu grinned, hugging the form of Chome tightly to her chest, nuzzling her cheek against his face. Yo! I'm Killer B of Kumo and this here is the Eight Tails Gyuki. We are brothers from another mother. B started to rap, but Naruto shot forward and slapped his hand over B's mouth laughing nervously. Yuki shook his head from his place on B's broad shoulder. Sorry to say B, but this is not the time to rap. Naruto said and B nodded solemnly remembering why they were all there. That's everyone. Naruto clapped his hands together bringing attention back to himself and Shikamaru. Not quite. Shikamaru reminded his Hokage. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Naruto grinned rubbing his neck. Sometimes I swear I don't know why I follow you. Shikamaru smacked his palm against his forehead. Because we are brothers, because we are survivors, and because we want peace. Naruto said sagely. Then you go and remind me. Shikamaru smiled fondly before Naruto skipped over to a clearing a little ways away from the group, Kurama clinging at the blonde hair as they moved. What is he doing now? Hashirama asked Shikamaru curiously as he stood beside the Nara. Filling our ranks. Shikamaru stated with a smirk as he kept his eyes trained on the blonde who was performing a series of hand signs. Those hand seals. Mito muttered in shock. An Uzumaki Kenjutsu. Kushina breathed out. I've read about it, but I've never seen anyone use it before. Kenjutsu? Minato said alarmed and his eyes darted over to his son who just slammed his bloodied palm against the ground by his feet. That's because even Uzumakis and their large Churka reserves do not have enough Churka to perform the Jutsu successfully, not only that the user needs to have an extremely strong emotional connection to the ones they are summoning and they need a strong mind and will to keep it together. Mito explained and this only upped the worry for Minato and Kushina. Uzumaki Kenjutsu, Kanzen na Memory Hansha, Complete Memory Reflection. Naruto shouted and the whole area surrounding him was engulfed in smoke. The smoke cleared enough to show Naruto standing with his arms crossed a pleased look on his face. Fall in. He shouted. Hi. Numerous male and female voices and one bark came in response. Team 7, which I am a part of. Naruto added in for the newly arrived ninjas. Ma, Kakashi Hataki, Jonin Sensei of Team 7 and XANBU Taicho. The silver-haired Jonin slash ANBU stepped out of the smoke, Hitai 8 was across his forehead exposing both Sharingan-less eyes and the scar down the left side of his face with his mask still firmly in place. He waved cheerfully at Minato and Kushina who were staring at him in shock, happiness and confusion at both his eyes being visible. Yamato, ANBU Taicho, and second, in command of Team 7. A man with a Hapuri-style Hitai 8 framing his face, his short brown hair exposed behind it said, bowing stiffly to the Hokage's eyes trained on Hashirama taking in the sight of the man whose DNA flew through his veins. Sakura Haruno, apprentice of Lady Tsunade. The pink-haired Kunoichi was pulling on her fingerless gloves, the diamond in the middle of her forehead making her look more threatening to all those who knew the reasoning behind the diamond. Sai, X root. A pale teen with ink black hair and brushes attached to his back spoke next, 
giving the group a creepy smile. Minato hissed under his breath, he knew Danzo had not dissolved all of Root and this was his proof. Sasuke Uchiha, ex-apprentice of Orochimaru. You better have a good reason for me to be here Dobe. Sasuke snarked from his place by Sakura, he had his hand resting on the hilt of Kuzanagi making Shikamaru subconsciously rub his shoulder wound. Does fighting a war count team? Naruto snarked back out of habit. This isn't the insane version, is it? Shikamaru asked eyeing the Uchiha warily. Do I look crazy? No way I would bring back that killer, this is the version of Sasuke that actually was helping in the war. Naruto gave Shikamaru a look. Just checking. Shikamaru smirked. That is Sasuke, you said he was safe back in the village? Itachi asked eyeing the other Uchiha with distrust as Sasuke stared back at Itachi blankly, some emotions swirling in his eyes for a few moments. A version of him, do not worry about it too much Itachi, your little brother is safe back in Kanoha. Once this is all over we will explain everything. Naruto assured the XANBU. Teammate, you're up. Shikamaru called out and the next group stepped forward. I am Karina Yuhi, Jonin Sensei to Team 8. Karina bowed, her ringed crimson eyes taking in Itachi as if she was waiting for him to pull her into a genjutsu. Kiba Inazuka, and this is my Nike Akamaru. Kiba smiled, rubbing behind Akamaru's large ears. Shino Aburaim. Shino said from behind his large collar, eyes gazed over the group before him from behind his tinted glasses. Hinata Hyuga. Hinata bowed to the group, her hair spilling in front of her face. Team 10. Naruto called. I'm Asuma Sarutobi, John and Sensei of Team 10. Asuma scratched his beard and Tobarama studied who he assumed was his student's son. Ino Yamanaka. The blonde said cheerfully, her long blonde bang hanging over her left eye. Choji Akimichi. Choji smiled at Shikamaru happily. I'm also part of Team 10, the newest generation of Inoshikacho. Shikamaru said, pride coloring his voice while Kushina and Minato smiled at the Inoshikacho group, as they had been friends with their parents. Finally, Team Guy. Naruto waved his hand as Guy and Lee struck a youthful pose. I am the John and Mato guy, and these are my youthful students. Guy shouted, hitting a pose in his green spandex. I am Rock Lee. Lee copied his sensei's pose as well. Hi, I'm Ten Ten. Ten Ten spoke up, adjusting the buns on the top of her head. Niji Fuga. Niji bowed his head slightly, white sleeves hanging down over his fingertips. Finally, the remaining legendary Sanans. Naruto waved his arm to the two remaining figures. I am the legendary Jiraiya, the Toad Sage and Seal Master. Jiraiya gave the group a two-fingered salute with a smile on his face. Jiraiya Sensei. Minato, Nagato, Konan, and Yahiko all exclaimed in surprise. Godame Hokage of Kanoha, Tsunade Senju. Tsunade introduced herself before she punched Jiraiya out in anger. Hashirama wincing. Feeling Jiraiya's pain at having a pissed off Tsunade on his case, but he was happy to see her so well. What was that for Haim? Jiraiya whined. What do you think it was for you, dumbass? Tsunade raged at him, cracking her knuckles. Go for it, Bachan. Arosenin deserves it. Naruto cheered, and Jiraiya just started to cry dramatically as Tsunade descended upon him. Minato shook his head in amazement at his son's nicknames for two of the most powerful Sanans in the Five Nations. All here and account for. Naruto smiled cheerfully with the sounds of Tsunade pounding Jiraiya into the ground in the background. Now we are ready for war. Naruto turned serious as he looked at the large group. First thing first, we need to get a Beto slash Tobi away from Madara and Zetsu. Shikamaru raised his index finger in front of his face. And into the seal, gotcha. Naruto nodded in understanding as he pulled out a seal from his pocket, Minato stared at it trying to figure out what it was for. 
It was extremely complex and didn't look like any seal he had ever seen before. It's a soul purification seal too, San, something of my own creation. Naruto handed it over to his father knowing that he was inspecting it. Kushina took this chance to wrap her arms around his shoulders, hugging him tightly while Kurama grumbled before he hopped off of Naruto's head and onto Shikamaru's, his tails weaving around the high ponytail. This is incredibly complex Naruto, I'm very interested in what else you can create. Minato smiled fondly at his son, ruffling the blonde hair as he handed back the seal. Thanks to San. Naruto said shyly as he blushed happily. A messenger hawk that Kanoha uses suddenly flew into sight and made a beeline towards Shikamaru. Kurama hissed at the bird before it landed on Shikamaru's outstretched arm. Shikamaru quickly unscrolled the message and his face turned stormy. He patted the bird on its head before the hawk took off once more. Shikamaru? Gara asked seeing the look on the Nara's face. News from the others. They have found all of Orochimaru's bases. Shikamaru glanced at Naruto who hurried over to the Nara looking just as grim. What happened? Naruto asked, Itachi inching forward to hear the news. Apparently when he and Kabuto were killed during their failed invasion attempt, it sent off some sort of failsafe. Every base and every person within them were destroyed completely. Shikamaru's fist clenched taking the paper with it. No, that bastard. Karen. Naruto hissed out, punching the ground by his feet. Who is Karen? Kushina asked her son, kneeling beside him giving him another hug. Karen Uzumaki, she was part of our clan Kasan. She could use Churka chains and had healing Churka, if someone bit her they would be healed. I really wanted to give her a home. Naruto explained, the remaining Uzumakis tensed up at his words. If we didn't already kill those two bastards. Shikamaru hissed burning the scroll to get rid of the message. I know we can't focus on what is done. We have a war to stop. Naruto took a calming breath as he stood up, hugging his mother back. Abito's Churka is coming this way, he is the only one who can move freely right now. Niji reported his Byakugan facing south and Hinatas was facing north. All right, the only ones who will be taking part of this part of the battle are Tusan, Kusan, Kakashi-sensei, and myself. Konan create a hiding place in Shikamaru will use a Churka deflecting seal I made to make sure you aren't detected. Naruto ordered his whole body taking the form of what he was when he was Hokage in his future. Hi. Konan and Shikamaru agreed. Wait, if we are going to be fighting a war here won't a village nearby be able to sense all the large amounts of Churka being used? Mito spoke up suddenly. Don't worry about that, when we were gathered you all I sent out a bunch in to set up seals to stop our Churka from being sensed by outsiders. Naruto smiled as he handed one to Shikamaru to use. Mito nodded in understanding and Naruto's parents grinned at how much of a seal genius their son was. The four who were going to face Abito separated from the group and watched as Conan erected a barrier that completely blended in with the surrounding area. Naruto closed his eyes and let his senses expand, searching for any churka in the area, he grinned, as he sensed none. All right, let's move down to the field. Naruto nodded his head and the four dropped down onto the barren field below. Kakashi was perched on a boulder, elbow resting on one knee keeping both eyes out while Kushina kept her senses open as Minato assisted his son in setting up the soul purification seal. What is this going to do when Abito steps on it? Minato asked in a hushed voice. You'll have to wait and see too, San. Naruto said cheerfully as he completed the seal and backed up to stand at the base of the boulder Kakashi was perched on. I can guarantee it will be explosive. Naruto added in before Abito appeared a few feet away from the hidden seal, Toby mask firmly in place. Don't bother with the Toby act Abito. Naruto held up his hand before Abito even had a chance to say a word. Naruto Uzumaki, the Nine Tails Jinshuriki, I've been looking for you. Abito took off the orange spiral mask, showing his half-deformed face and single Sharingan eye. 
That's convenient as I have been looking for you as well. Naruto smirked back adjusting his hitayate once more before the battle began. Well, well if it isn't my old teammate and sensei, how nice to see you all again. Abito said, malice in his voice and anger rippling across his face. Abito. Kakashi traced the scar on his face before he blinked both of his Sharingan appearing. The silver hair copy name disappeared from his spot in a blur. Abito tensed and whirled around in time for Kakashi's foot to connect strongly with his gut sending him skidding backwards. Koshina. Minato shouted as he and Naruto dropped into kneeling positions. Right. Kushina threw her arms out towards Abito and golden churka chains erupted from her body and wrapped around Abito completely, the kunaians anchoring the chains to the ground. Now to San. Naruto shouted as he bit his thumb, spreading the blood across his right palm as Minato copied the action. Fujin. The two Namakes shouted as they slammed their palms against the edge of the seal and watched as it glowed with Kyubi red light and the seals lifted up off the ground and wrapped around Abito who was struggling fiercely against Kush and his Churka chains. The seal lines burned onto Abito's body and the Exleaf ninja screamed out, blood leaking from his mouth, nose, ears and eye as the seal did its job. Is he going to be okay? Kakashi asked as he guarded Naruto's back, a bunshin doing the same for Minato. I did say it was going to be explosive, but don't worry Kakashi-sensei Abito will be back to his old self soon. Naruto said cheerfully as the seal markings started to dim before they disappeared completely. Abito let his head drop to his chest and with a nod from Naruto, Kushina loosened her chains lowering Abito to his knees before retracting them all together. Abito? You in there Abito? Naruto stepped in front of the kneeling missing Nin. Where am I? Abito grumbled, rubbing the blood off his face as he looked around at the ninjas around him. Minato sensei? Kushinichan? Kakashi? A mini Minato sensei? Abito's eyes widened. Yeah, that's him. Kakashi rolled his eyes as Minato gently placed his hand on Abito's shoulder. Abito Kuen, what do you remember? Minato asked gently and Abito placed a hand on his own forehead. I, I remember everything and oh god Kakashi, Rinchan. Oh god, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Abito placed his hands over his eyes as he hunched over breathing deeply. The seal worked, Abito was back to his old self. Naruto announced firmly. Oh Abito kun it's okay, just let it all out. Kushina soothed the Uchiha as she hugged him as tears leaked from his one good eye. Thank you, Naruto. Kakashi whispered to his student, getting a cheeky smile in response. You guys can come out now, Abito is on our side and back to his old self. Naruto called out, cupping his hands around his mouth and moments later the large group appeared, the paper returning to Conan's arms. Whoa! Abito's mouth dropped open at the sight of the previously dead Hokages. This is our army against Madara and Zetsu. Naruto said smugly. No wonder we could not track down any of the Jinchurikis after Sasori and Daidara disappeared. Abito mused while Shikaku and Gara looked much too smug after hearing his words. How far away are they? Shikamaru glanced at Niji and Hinata who were still scanning for incoming Churkas. Ten minutes from that direction. Hinata reported pointing at the opposite side of the battlefield. Shikamaro has filled you all in on our plan, correct? Naruto looked at the group getting nods before he let a wicked smile play across his lips. Perfect, all right those who have summoning contracts this is the time to use them and Jinshuriki's time to show me what you all have learned. Naruto ordered. Jiraiya and Tsunade leapt off the cliff as they summoned Gamabunta and Katsuyu, the two Sanans landing on their respective summons' heads. May as well make it a full set. Sasuke smirked and he leapt off the cliff summoning Manda, landing on the large snake's head. Explanations later. Naruto said glancing at Itachi who was staring at his little brother in shock, well as much shock as he was willing to show. My turn. Shikamaru slammed his hand in front of him, large puffs of smoke appeared as Kosetsu, Snowfall, 
stretched up to her full height, yawning slightly as Shikamaru dropped down onto her head. All right, Jinshurikis, let's show these shinobi who we do things. Yagura smirked and the eight Jinshurikis leapt off the cliffside, separating out the whole length of the battlefield and their churka spiked up as they focused. I can't wait to see their shrouds. Naruto said excitedly as he rocked back and forth on his heels. Each tailed beast grew to their original massive size, standing at the ready behind each of their partners looking feral and ready for a fight. Each Jinshuriki had a churka shroud covering them, splitting off into the same number of tails as their bijus and the color of the churka matching the skin slash fur slash shell of their animalistic partners. Gara's body was covered in the same black tattoos as the ones that covered Shikaka's tail and black tipped ear hovered above his head. Yujido's nails grew into cat claws and her pupils turned feline while blue and black flamed cat ears were floating above her head. Yagura's shroud formed sharp spikes along its outline and matching horns appeared above his head. Rashi's hands, feet and ears turned ape-like to match Sun Goku's. Any changes that happened to Han other than yellow-tipped ears appearing in his churka shroud were not seen thanks to his full body armor. Yudakata body seemed to be glistening and white antennae merged with the white blue of his shroud. He had maroon horns on either side of his head and the outline of his shroud became covered in puckers much like the ones on Giyuki's tails. Fu was happily hovering above the ground thanks to Komiai's wing-like tails and a beetle horn was settled right above her forehead. Impressive. Naruto whistled. Two minutes. Niji reported tensely. Our turn to San. Naruto closed his eyes and let the orange markings appear on his eyelids showing he was in perfect sage mode. Minato looked at him in shock, but quickly jumped off the cliffside ready to bring out the in portion of the nine tails churka he had sealed within himself before he died. Naruto effortlessly slipped into his tail churka mode, Kurama growing to his full size behind the blonde, Naruto rotated his shoulders getting used to using this form once more and watched amused at his father's face when moments after he too transformed into his own churka mode, a darker version of Kurama appearing behind the yandame. They are here. Hinata's voice echoed in everyone's mind, Ino taking up her role as communicator right away. You know the plan. Naruto shouted loudly and before Madara or Zetsu could even say one word to the army in front of them they were attacked and separated from the other. Black Zetsu seeing how outnumbered the two of them were had White Zetsu created millions of his bunshins, having fought this before the Kanoa ninja that Naruto recreated from his memories leapt into action, along with their summons, and started to destroy the bunshins gleefully while Black Zetsu sank into the ground, disappearing from the battle. Sakura leapt off the back of Sai's ink bird, rearing her right arm back before she slammed her knuckles into the ground. She watched pleased as the ground cracked apart, chunks of rock taking out some of the white bunchins while others fell into the crack itself. Hell yeah! Sai, I could use a lift. Sakura cheered before she jumped high into the sky, landing on the back of Sai's ink bird once more. Good punch, ugly. Sai smiled as Sakura's eyebrow twitched and she whacked him over the head in anger as Yamato Tachio just sighed at their antics. Where are the others? Sakura asked eyeing the battlefield from their vantage point. Looks like the Uchihas, Namakes and Senjus are teaming up against Madara while the others fend off the white setsas giving time for Shikamaru to set up the next part of the plan. Yamato reported as his keen eyes scanned the field below. What the hell is that? Sakura suddenly shouted as masses of white setsus swarmed together and morphed into one giant white setsu, easily the same size as the tailed beasts. The white setsus did this seven more times and lumbered off to face off against bijus and their jinshurikis. It seems like the bijus shall be busy for the time being. Sai said as he directed his bird towards the area where the other teams from Kanoha were fighting together. Forward slash. Finally some action. Shikaku laughed as he and Gara charged towards the closet giant white Zetsu. Sabako Soteso Fuen, desert layered imperial funeral seal. Gara raised his arms upwards as sand poured from his gourd and from Shikaku's mouth, it formed a large step pyramid around the giant white Zetsu, trapping it away. Shikaku lumbered forward and slammed his large claws against the side of it and used his Juenjutsu to strength the seal. Our turn, yo! 
be cheered as he and Gyuki headed to the next giant bunshin. Hyuinjutsu, Okutapasu Horudo, Sealing Jutsu, Octopus Hold. Be spewed ink and they formed into 1,000 bunshins of himself and they rushed the giant white Zetsu Gyuki currently had in a strangle hold, the suckers on his tails helping immensely. The bunshins surrounded the white Zetsu as Gyuki leapt out of the way and the white Zetsu became black with ink and it froze, sealed, and unable to move whatsoever. Now Rashi. Son Goku rumbled at his Jinshuriki who nodded before he jumped up and landed on the yellow crown of Son Goku's head. Yotan, Shakage Koken, Lava Style, Scorching Armored Fist. They yelled as their bodies were covered in glowing red lava armor and they both attacked separate parts of their giant white Zetsu. Goku slammed his tails into its legs while Rashi pummeled his fist into its face, Rashi landed back on Goku's head and the two watched as the giant white Zetsu screeched as the lava and heat ate away at it, burning it to ashes. Ready Utakata? Saikan asked his partner who readied his pipe from his place sitting cross-legged on his head. Hi, together. Utakata nodded his head. Kairokyu, Wisdom Wolf Decay. Saikan opened his mouth and released a dense corrosive gas that spread across the giant white zetsu they were facing. Santoka, Acid Permeation Yudakata blew a large acid bubble towards the white zetsu and when it popped it started to burn its face as Saiken's jutsu ate away at it from the bottom upwards. Two Tails Fireball Yujido and Matatabi snarled in sync, huge balls of fire and chirka forming inches away from their open jaws and the moment they were fired they merged together and vaporized the giant white zetsu they were facing down. I'll distract it Chomei, then you finish it off. Fu cheered as she hovered in the sky next to her partner. Right Fu, be careful. Chomei said worried for the Taiki Ninja. Haiden, Rinpunga Kira no Jutsu, secret, hiding in scale powder technique. Fu opened her mouth, exhaling a large amount of fine blue powder, temporarily blighting the giant white Zetsu. While the giant Bunshin stumbled about blindly Chomei flew in for his attack. Gakito Yakaku, Spear Attack, Shining Horn. Chomei slammed his foremost Ron into the white Zetsu's chest and ripped upwards, splitting it in half in time for Futi send a basic Katanjutsu, size enhanced by her Churka Shroud, at it, destroying it completely. One attack is one should suffice Isabu. Yagura deemed after studying the white Zetsu in front of him and the three tails. I am thinking so as well. Isabu agreed as Yagura braced his feet shoulder width apart on the tailed beast's head. Swayton, Daikai Kaiswuden, Water Style, Great Water Mass Bullet. The two cried in unison, together they both sent numerous powerful bullets of water towards the white Zetsu and watched as it went down with many through and through holes in its body. Looks like we have the honor of destroy the last of the giant white Zetsu's hahan? Kokuo glanced at his steam armor wearing partner. They saved the best for last obviously. Han nodded his head. Get ready I'll drive it right to you. Sunori, horn breaking. Koko rushed at the giant white Zetsu and slammed his horns right into its torso, pushing it back several hundred feet. Futen, Kairiki Nuzo, boil style, unrivaled strength. Han's armor started to vent out streams of steam and moments later Han rushed towards his partner and his opponent with surprising speed and lashed out with a roundhouse kick, the torso of the white Zetsu was cleaved apart with one kick. Han aimed a few more punches and with a few flicks from Kokuo's tail the white Zetsu was nothing more than a pile of useless white limbs. Forward slash. Damn those tailed beasts and Jinshurikis are powerful. Kiba whistled impressed as he slammed his fist into the face of a white Zetsu sending it back into Hinata who disabled it with a few precise hits of her palms. Hum. Shino hummed as his kadature turned to his body after eating away at a wave of white Zetsus. Keep focused Kiba. Karinai reminded as she kicked a white Zetsu into Akamara's waiting razor teeth. Chobaika no Jutsu, Super Expansion Jutsu. Shoji shouted after he swallowed one of his colored pills, using his large palm he swatted away another wave of white zetsus that were heading towards Shikamaru who was focused on setting up the next part of the plan with help from Nagato, Kushina, and Mito Uzumaki. Konan and Yahiko were protecting Nagato's back, not willing to leave his side for even a moment. 
Are you three clear on what you need to do when Madara gets here? Shikamaru asked voice taking the tone it did when he was ANBU commander. Hi. The Uzumakis nodded, taking their role seriously. Abito and Itachi should be getting over here soon. Shikamaru muttered as Sakura, Sai, and Yamato dropped down next to Team Guy. They are heading this way with Naruto. Sakura reported as she jabbed the heel of her hand into a white Zetsu's face. Any location on Black Zetsu yet? Shikamaru asked Sai, not flinching as Eno and Asuma destroyed white Zetsus that got close to his back. No, it seems he is staying well hidden for the time being. Sai reported sending a few ink panthers at some nearby white Zetsus. Send a message to Lady Tsunade and Jiraiya, get them to start looking for him. Shikamaru ordered and Sai whipped out a brush and sprawled out the message, sending it on an ink hawk. Shikamaru glanced up and saw Kosetsa cheerfully stamping on white Zetsus as she single-handedly protected the south side of their group. I'm going to be sleeping for weeks after this workout. Kosetsa grumbled and Shikamaru full-heartedly agreed with her. Shikamaru glanced up for a moment and spotted Jiraiya and Tsunade making a beeline for the cliffside they all had been gathered on before, they must have spotted Black Zetsu. He would leave Black Zetsu to the two Sanans for the time being, right now they had to neutralize Madara even if he was being played by Zetsu the whole time he needed to be taken out of the battle and soon. Forward slash. Itachi watched as Manda's tail landed next to him and Sasuke slid down at landing easily next to him. Nisan. Sasuke smirked at his older brother, amused at the critical stare Itachi had directed at him. Ready to fight by my side? Until Naruto Uzumaki and Shikamaru Nara explain this to me, I shall fight alongside you Sasuke. Itachi decided as he flung off his cloak, getting ready for battle. Good luck with getting any useful information out of that dobe. Sasuke snorted as he drew Kuzanagi from the large purple rope that was wrapped around his waist. Looks like Naruto and Minato sensei are keeping Madara busy for the time being. Abito commented as he and Kakashi dropped next to the Uchiha brothers. The four turned their attention to the dual nine tails and Churka shrouded ninjas who were fighting in unison against Madara Uchiha like they had been fighting side by side for their whole lives. The Yandame, Sasuke Uchiha and Kakashi Hataki will be fighting Madara next alongside us while Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, Abito and Itachi Uchiha will head over to meet up with Shikamaru Nara. Tobarama stated as he and Hashirama appeared next to the group of Sharingan users in a swirl of leaves. Hi. The Sharingan users agreed, moments later Naruto appeared in a flash of orange. Keep him busy until the signal then drive him to the site. Naruto said, his voice taking on one of power, much like Akage. Let's get busy then, Owen Nisan. Thanks for your eyes. Sasuke smirked, his Mangekyo Sharingan appeared, as did the glowing red Susanoo that formed a barrier around the youngest Achiha. Itachi stared at the sight before him, before he shook his head to clear his mind as the four remaining ninjas leapt into the fray beside Minato and the Inchurka version of the Nine Tails. Itachi, Abito hold on. Naruto smirked wickedly as two of his nine Churka tails extended out and wrapped around the Uchiha's waists. Naruto dropped to all fours like a fox and took off at high speeds, Abito let out a yelp of surprise while Itachi stayed silent, far too composed to let out a sound of shock at the sudden speed. Sasuke fought mainly on his own while Kakashi fell into a familiar routine of fighting at his sensei's side while the Senju brothers made their combination of Suetun, Water, and Mokutan, Wood, Jutsus. All in all Madara had to fight harder than he first thought he would have to when entering this battle. There it is. Minato shouted suddenly as a huge Uzumaki clan spiral appeared in the sky about 200 feet due west. Drive him back. Sasuke shouted as he shot a large katan justu at Madara's back. One after the other the Kanoha shinobi attacked relentlessly, successfully driving Madara to the site. Forward slash. Steady. Naruto shouted as one powerful combination attack from the Senju brothers sent Madara into the Uzumaki's range. Now. 
Shikamaru shouted and numerous Cherka chains erupted from the four Uzumakis who were standing on four corners of a seal that Shikamaru had laid out beforehand. Hold him there. Naruto ordered getting nods from Nagato, Mido and Kushina each one focused on keeping their Cherka chains stabilized and keeping Madara immobilized. The chains were meant to restrain tailed beasts by themselves so when four Uzumakis focused on keeping one ninja restrained it did the job four times over. Abito, Itachi your turn to take a shot at him. Shikamaru smirked as he stepped out of the way as the two Uchihas approached Madara. Abito placed one hand on Itachi's shoulder and the other on Madara's and gave a grin. Hang on tight boys. Abito cackled as he activated his Mangekyo Sharingan and using his space-time dimension jutsu he brought the trio into Kanui's dimension. Madara stumbled a bit as the Churka chains disappeared, not having made the trip. Itachi activated his own Sharingan and Susanoo formed around him, the gourd in its right hand rose up and quickly it drew the Tatsuka no Tsuruji, sort of Tatsuka, and rushed forward stabbing Madara in the stomach. Madara coughed up blood as the legendary sort of ceiling started to live up to its name. Why? You both are Uchihas, Abito you were on my side, why? Madara rasped out. Your mind is warped with hatred Madara, and it ends now. Abito growled, angry at how Madara twisted and used him to kill and almost to destroy the world in his own quest for power and revenge. Itachi raised his hand and made a fist, the Tatsuka no Tsuruji, sort of Tatsuka, finished its job, sealing Madara away forever. That's a handy thing you have there Itachi. Abito smiled cheerfully at the Uchiha. Once we get back to the village and everything has settled down we should have a spar. It would be a lot of fun. It would be interested to see how we fare against each other. Itachi mused and let his lips tilt upwards at the cheer and fist pump Abito gave. Hang on then Itachi. Abito smiled, grabbing the Uchiha's shoulder and warped them out of Kanui's dimension. The two landed in the same spot as before seeing the Uzumakis tense up in case something went wrong. Madara is sealed away thanks to the Tatsuka no Tsuruji, sort of Tatsuka, Itachi has. Abito reported, snapping off a salute at the gathered group, spurring cheers. We have a problem. Jiraiya shouted as he and Tsunade dropped down next to Naruto and Shikamaru. Oh come on? Can't we get a break? Naruto whined. Zetsu was summoning her, we tried to stop him, but... Tsunade trailed off as the ground below their feet started to tremble and shake. Too late, Kagaya is coming and soon. We need a plan and fast. Jiraiya finished the thought grimly. Can't Itachi use the Tatsuka no Tsuruji, sort of Tatsuka, on this Kagaya? Hashirama asked confused as to why the others looked so worried. She's the goddess of Cherka, she can't be sealed that easily. Naruto ran his hands down his face. Erosen in his right, we need a plan and fast as Sasuke and I don't have the powers we got from the Sage of Six Paths this time around. How is he able to unseal her without Madara and his infinite Tsukuyami? He's gone and can't be used as a vessel. Sakura asked edging closer to her teammates. When the battle started, he must have sent out white zetsas to nearby villages and put them in infinite Tsukuyami after creating the needed conditions, for a vessel he must have used his own body. Shikamaru theorized and Naruto slammed his fist into the ground, creating a small carter where his knuckles made contact. Okay, okay. Naruto breathed out, trying to keep himself calm. Naruto, the mindscape. Shikamaru breathed out as an idea popped into his mind as he looked up at the nine bijus that were surrounding the group. Brilliant Shika! Naruto cheered, hugging Shikamaru quickly before he rushed over to Kurama and leapt up onto the fox's head. Kurama, the shared mindscape you and the others have. Can you all work together to create a new one? One that would either destroy or permanently reseal Kagaya and Zetsu? Naruto asked quickly. Kurama mused over the idea, as did the other tailed beasts. It's doable. Kurama reported with a wicked grin on his face. How long? Naruto asked urgently as the trembling grew and grew. Give us five minutes. 
Matatabi purred, Naruto nodded and disappeared in a flash of orange to reappear by Shikamaru's side. Five minute, we have to keep her busy for five minutes and not get killed or sucked into her dimensions, trust me they are a pain to be in. Naruto glanced around the army he and Shikamaru had massed. The Churka chains can hold her down, the others can attack if needed. Shikamaru stated. All right you heard him. Naruto nodded his agreement and the groups moved towards where Kagaya was awakening while the Bijus stayed back to work on their part of the plan. Go! Kushina shouted chains erupted from Mito and Nagato wrapping around the transforming form of Zetsu from a solid distance. Naruto darted around the army, touching each of their hands or shoulders quickly pleased as Kyuubi Red Churka engulfed them each lending them parts of his Churka as he noticed they were all looking a bit exhausted. Thanks N.A.R. Shikamaru grinned as he prodded his right side gently, wincing a bit. Are you okay? Naruto asked urgently. One of the white Zetsus got a lucky shot in. Shikamaru brushed off Naruto's concern. Focus on the task at hand, you may want to add your chains now, Kagaya's power is starting to make them look a bit strained. Right, but if I found out you were hiding a wound from me. Naruto let his threat trail off as he rushed to stand beside his mother and Nagato, sending his orange-red chains out with flicks of his wrists stopping all movements Kagaya was able to make. Are you okay, Ka-san? Naruto asked worriedly as his mother's posture was slumped. I'm fine, Naruchan, don't worry about me. Kushina beamed at her son. Naruto grumbled under his breath about the nickname and having to get revenge on Kakashi as soon as they were back in the village. Kushina just giggled at her son's antics. How much longer? Nagato asked the blonde, sweat covering his whole body. Not much longer, just hold on the best you can Nagato. Naruto promised his cousin. I will. Nagato steeled his resolve as his eyes spotted Conan and Yahiko watching him worriedly, red churka surrounding them restoring them. Two more minutes. Shikamaru told the Uzumakis. She's starting to break through our chains. Mito commented, gritting her teeth together. Darling, some help would be appreciated. Of course, dear. Hashirama moved forward to stand beside his wife. He raised his right arm and braced it with his left. Mokutan, Mokusatsu Shirbari no Jutsu, would style, silent strangle Jutsu. His right arm turned into a tree, many branches then extended and wrapped around Kagaya. Yamato Tachio you too. Naruto called out. Yamato appeared a few steps behind the blonde and performed the exact same jutsu as the Shodai. I was injected with your cells Shodai-sama. Yamato quickly explained at the questioning look he was getting from the elder Senju. Ah, well that makes you my grandnephew then. Hashirama laughed joyfully at the new addition to his clan. Dara threw his arms up to the side and his sand locked onto Kagaya as well with the other Jinchurikis flanking him. One more minute. Kagekubashibari no Jutsu, Shadow Strangle Jutsu. Shikamaru knelt down on one knee making the needed hand signs, his shadow extended out and wrapped around Kagaya, the hand clutching at her neck. Almost there. Naruto gritted his teeth, a bead of sweat rolling down the side of his face, he had never had to hold his chains for this long period of time before and he could see the others shaking as they poured their strength and churka into keeping the goddess contained. Back away now! Kurama bellowed as the eight ninjas leapt back releasing their hold on Kagaya. The exhausted shinobis stumbled back as the tailed beasts surrounded Kagaya, their eyes glowing in churka surrounding Kagaya. Kakashi picked Naruto up under his arm, pulling the blonde back to a safe range while Minato picked his wife up bridal style. Tobarama dragged his older brother backwards while Tsunade assisted her grandmother. Konan and Yahiko slung Nagato's arms over their shoulders pulling him back while Asuma tossed Chikamaru over his shoulder with Choji and Ino snickering beside him. Bihu rushed forwards ignoring Gara, saying he could walk on his own grabbed Gara around the waist towing him back to a safe distance. It's all up to the bijus now. Naruto muttered to Shikamaru as the two stood beside each other once their respective friends slash family members released them. Oju, Hakai no Haigen, 
tailed beast, plane of destruction. The nine-tailed beasts shouted as they flung huge balls of churka at Kagaya, engulfing her completely. The world started to shake once more and an inhuman roar came from within the ball of churka Kagaya was trapped in. It started to shake and blur together as it grew smaller and smaller until it disappeared from existence altogether. Silence covered the battlefield as dust settled around the shinobis. Did it work? Ten Ten asked, the first to break the silence. The bijus shrunk down to the sizes of cats and joined their jinshurikis. It worked, Kagaya and Zetsa both are no more and will never be able to unsealed again. Kurama reported smugly. Yes. Cheers went up from the gathered group, hugs and fist bumps were exchanged by the gathered ninjas. We did it Shika, it's all finally over. Naruto smiled blissfully as he and Shikamaru slumped against each other, their legs still somehow managing to keep them upright. I can't believe it NAR, but I think my churka is at its limit. Shikamaru exclaimed. Sleep well Sukashi Shika, little dear. Kosetsu knelt down in front of the Nara and gently butted his head with her nose. Thank you for helping me out Kosetsu. Shikamaru petted her fur before she disappeared in a puff of smoke. Shikamaru stumbled a bit, Naruto grabbed his upper arm to keep him upright. Let me just do this last justu. Naruto turned towards the Shodai, Naidame, Yandame, Mido, Kushina, and Yahiko. Uzumaki Kenjutsu, Bodhi Shufuku, Body Restoration Naruto bit down on a scroll and the shinobi's bodies brought back by the Edo Tensei became human and in perfect health, showing no sign they had been corpses or brought back by the Edo Tensei. This is amazing. Yahiko said in awe as he inspected his hands as Mito felt her face for cracks, but pleased as she found none. We should go to Naruto, your churka is low. Jiraiya said patting the blonde Uzumaki on his head gently. Okay. Naruto nodded, throat closing up at the idea. Hey we are all still alive, not only back in Kanoha, but also in here. Tsunade poked Naruto's chest. I know Bachan, thank you all for your help. I'll call you guys back if we need a good spare or we need help before the others are ready. Naruto said, voice thick. Shikamaru rubbed his eyes as each team puffed away in clouds of smoke as they waved goodbye. Whoa, okay what just happened there? Abito held his hands up in confusion at Kakashi disappearing. They were just jerka memories, don't worry Abito Kakashi is safe back in the village and I know he misses you horribly. Naruto said soothingly. We better be off, we've all been away for too long. Gara commented as they ate and shurikis dropped out of their churka shrouds holding their tired-tailed beasts in their arms or on their shoulders. We understand, if it wasn't for all of you, none of this would have been possible. Shikamaru said honestly with Naruto nodding in agreement. I'm sure we all are glad we could be of use this time around. Yujido commented the others who had been killed before the war had taken place gave their agreement. Until our next powwow. Naruto said cheerfully, grunting as Fu gave him a tight hug. We are still not going to call our meetings that. Gara gave the blonde a glare as Fu scurried up onto B's shoulder, as it seemed to be her new favorite place to sit. Come on Fu, we will all drop you back in Taki and make sure they are accepting of you. Yagura promised and Fu's face lit up. Keep in touch. Naruto shouted as the Jinshurikis bade goodbye to the group heading back to Kanoha and went in the direction of Taki. Do we get that explanation now? Abito asked impatiently. Maybe later. Shikamaru's eyes were starting to droop. Shit, my Bunshin and Akito have disappeared, I don't have enough Churka left. Shikamaru visibly winced as the memories from both of them entered his mind. Akira and my Bunshin are disappearing too. Naruto grumbled and dropped to his knees when those memories hit him, the bases had been blown to pieces and they had only found body parts of the people working there including Karen's head. We'll explain everything later, we promise, just right now. Sleep. Naruto promised. Just like a Nara. Shikamaru said fondly at how sleep was now Naruto's priority. 
Damn right, I basically live at the compound. Of course I'm a Nara now. Naruto yawned and suddenly the two were surrounded in smoke and they were back to their correct ages, their clothes had stayed intact, just smaller. The two 13-year-old chunins swayed on the spot, eyes closing, and they passed out. Minato and Itachi were the first to snap out of the shock the group had been put in by seeing the two suddenly become 13. Minato caught Naruto, heaving him up in his arms, cradling his sleeping boy who was just that, a boy. Itachi managed to put Shikamaru on his back, holding under his knees and the Nara's arms dropped over Itachi's shoulders and head resting next to the right side of Itachi's neck. What just happened? Yahiko asked looking at the others who all looked as clueless as he felt. Naruto Uzumaki and Shikamaru Nara are only 13 years old, they must have been in a henge this whole time. Itachi said, as he was the only one in the group that had run into Naruto before all of this had begun. They must be exhausted, we need shelter for the night and we can speak with them in the morning before heading to Kanoha. Kushina brushed Naruto's bangs out of his peaceful face. Hi. Mokuton, Shichuka no Jutsu, would style, for Pillar House Jutsu. Hashirama slammed his palms against the ground by his feet and the group watched as wood appeared from the Shodai's hands and created an inn in the cliffside in front of them. The group carefully entered the wooden house and separated into different rooms, Minato and Itachi chose to put Naruto and Shikamaru in the same room having seen their brother's ship on the battlefield and knew they would instantly look for the other once they awoken. I'll watch over them. Minato promised Itachi who just nodded and left the room without another word, Kushina slipped into the room next and settled between Naruto and Shikamaru. What do you think Minato? Kushina asked her husband in a soft voice as she adjusted the blanket on Shikamaru. I have theories, but for now I am content to watch over Naruto and Shikamaru until they can explain everything to us in the morning. Minato said after a moment of thought. I think that would be best for the time being. Kushina nodded before the two settled in for a night of watching over the two 13-year-olds. Naruto groaned as something attacked his hand. It felt like million of little wings beating against his skin in an irritating way. He cracked his blue eyes open, seeing his two sen asleep, head resting on his crossed arms on the edge of the cot Naruto had been placed on. Naruto couldn't resist a beaming smile that appeared on his lips before he turned his attention to the irritating feeling on his right hand. His eyebrows furrowed when he saw a swarm of Shino's Kadecha forming a message across the width of his upturned palm. Naruto read the message and his face turned stormy and dark, he gave a sharp nod and the Kidecha dispersed. Naruto glanced over to where he felt Shikamaru's churka coming from and saw the Nara watching the Uzumaki Namakase carefully with his sharp brown eyes. Shikamaru too had seen the message and Kushina was fast asleep between their beds. Scenario 20 Naruto used ANBU hand language to get the situation across to the raven. What's scenario 20? Minato's voice drifted across the room, Naruto's head snapped to the side to look at his Tusen who was stretching out his back, rubbing sleep from his eyes. I guess I forgot as Hokage you had to learn ANBU sign language. Naruto rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly as Shikamaru slapped his hand against his face groaning at the stupidity of his brother. The better question is how did you two learn it? Minato eyed the 13-year-olds warily. What's going on? Kushina asked drowsily as she was roused by the voices around her. Something is wrong. Minato stated simply seeing the dark looks on his son's and Shikamaru's faces. We'll explain when we get the others together. Naruto swung his legs over the side of the bed, Shikamaru copying the actions and together the four headed towards the main room where the rest were awake and waiting. What's wrong? Tobarama asked seeing the dark looks on the Chunin's faces. We just got a message sent by Shino Aburame's Kadaichu. It seems Danzo and his root ninja have taken control of the village, capturing all shinobi and locking the citizens away in their homes. Shino sent a message for us, telling us Danzo has sent out root ninjas to find and capture us. Naruto explained eyeing Shikamaru who was checking his supplies and making sure his katana was securely attached to his back. Danzo. Itachi hissed under his breath while Minato's face turned dark as his son's. 
Shikamaru, go in and do recon. Naruto nodded at the Nara who bowed back in respect before he stepped back into a shadow that was being casted by a stream of sunlight filtering in through a nearby window. Shikamaru breathed out calmly before he sunk into the shadows. What was that? Yahiko asked in awe. Shikamaru is from the Nara clan, a clan of shadow users, he just took the standard shunshin and bent it to work with his clan style. Naruto said absently as he rummaged around in his pouch and with a small aha, brought out a scroll. He unrolled the blank scroll and quickly and easily created a detailed map of Kanoha and the outlying areas around it. We have the main point of entry that Danzo is sure to guard here. Naruto circled the front gate. However even Danzo is not stupid enough to trespass on the forest belonging to the Nara clan here. Naruto outlined the area that held the Nara's forest. As long as Shikamaru is with us then we can use it freely. I also discovered a different passageway to enter and leave the village in the land behind the Senju estate here. Naruto painted a circle a bit away from the Senju estate. How did you know about that passage? Tobarama asked showing his surprise. When Tsunade Bachan became Bodame, she unsealed the Senju estate, then dragged Jiraiya, Kakashi and myself to live there with her. She was adamant after she saw my crappy apartment and the state of Kakashi's place. Naruto chuckled fondly at the memory of Tsunade dragging Jiraiya and Kakashi by their ears to the estate telling them that they are living there now. Good. Kushina nodded her head in approval while Minato gave a small smile at the idea of all his precious people living together as a family. Until Shikamaru returns with his report there isn't much else we can plan. Naruto muttered as he studied the map. You look like you personally hold a grudge against Danzo. Minato stated standing beside his son as Kushina went and filled the others in on who Danzo was and Itachi explained in a few words about how Danzo killed his best friend and forced him into becoming the murderer of his whole clan, even Tobarama who hated the Uchihas winced back when he heard what happened. Well. Naruto pursed his lips together tightly, debating if he should tell his two sen that Danzo was the reason he grew up alone and hated. He's the reason I grew up alone. Naruto said truthfully, deciding he was not going to keep this in any longer. What do you mean alone? Minato asked, eyes darkening as his mind raced with different theories. I mean he and the council convinced Jiraiya and Tsunade Bachan that the other was looking after me and made them leave the village. Kashinisan then said that Danzo was the one who told him to become an ANBU, to get his emotions under control from what happened that night with Kurama. Danzo then stopped all his attempts to find me until Kashinisan spotted me in the academy, and that's when he left the ANBU to become my Janin sensei. Naruto explained, by this time the whole room was listening and he found himself squished between both his parents in another hug, both his parents were seething with anger at Danzo and full of sadness for their son. Who knows what else Danzo has done from the shadows? Itachi growled under his breath, his rage at Danzo building up once more. The reason I believe he acted now was because Bachan has been ignoring him and undermining him as Godame, taking power away from him. Danzo would not like that and he was against her becoming Godame in the first place. With Shikamaru and myself away from the village it would give him the best chance to strike. Naruto explained placing his hand against his chin in a thinking position. I'm back. Shikamaru spoke up out of the blue as he stepped out of a shadow, his face emotionless like an ANBU. Shikamaru sat in front of the map Naruto had drawn out and without a word started to mark out locations of root ninjas. They have the academy under their control, keeping all the students and senseis trapped inside it that must be what he is using to keep the Godame and the other more powerful shinobis under control. Shikamaru spoke with no emotion, but Naruto could see how his fingers tightened on the brush. Root ninjas are spread throughout the village, however behind the Hokage Monument and the Nara Forest it is clear as are the estates that belong to the Hokages of the past. Danzo's main area of operation is the ring where the Chunin fights were held, he has the most powerful shinobis kept there inside a Churka blocking barrier, an addition seal had been added on so that anything that touches the barrier will be electrocuted. Shikamaru reported making a dark circle around the academy and the arena. That bastard. 
Who is being held in the arena? Naruto swore under his breath before he sat down opposite of his best friend. You wouldn't believe it. Shikamaru snickered, his emotionless facade breaking. He can't be that stupid. Naruto gapped. I bet he thought he was being clever. Shikamaru kept snickering. Who did he put in the arena? Hashirama asked curious now. Lady Tsunade, Jiraiya, the Sandame, Kakashi, Iraka sensei who looked like he was just by Kakashi at the wrong time, Asuma, Karinai, Gai, and all their students, plus my two san Inoichi-san and Chosa-san. Shikamaru reported and Naruto just laughed into his hand. He's doomed. Naruto breathed out through his laughter. Looks like we may not have to do much at all. Shikamaru said smugly. I've got it. Naruto said brightly and placed an X on the front gates. I'll summon Jiraiya and Tsunade from my memories once more and they will summon Gamabunta and Katsuyu at the front gates to become a distraction. As Danzo has Jiraiya and Tsunade in the arena he will want to know who summoned them and he'll send root members to the gates. While that is happening three teams will be coming in from the Nara forest, the passage behind the Senju estate and behind the Hokage monument. Naruto placed two more X's on the three previously stated areas. The team that will be moving through the passage behind the Senju estate will be the Shodai, Mito Uzumaki, and the Naidane. You three will take out any root members you come across in the village, do not kill, just knock unconscious and restrain. Naruto looked at the three, feeling a bit uneasy about ordering the previous Hokages around, but to his relief, they nodded in agreement. It will be a good way to get reacquainted with the village. Tobarama said, no excitement in his voice, but Naruto could tell it was there. Besides if a root member does tell Danzo he was taken out by the dead Shodai, his wife and the Naidame, Danzo will never believe him. Hashirama said not bothering to hide his excitement and Mito just smiled at the idea. Shikamaru will lead the group entering from the Nara forest that will head to free the academy. Danzo must be using that as a hostage otherwise Bachan would have taken out that barrier holding them by now with her strength. That group will be Shikamaru, Konan, Nagato and Yahiko, Shikamaru once you finish there you will meet up with my group. Nagato I'm trusting you, Konan and Yahiko to keep the children safe if anything happens to them. Naruto trailed off looking at the aim ninjas. Nothing will happen to the children you have our word. Conan swore, her eyes fiery, clearly her maternal instincts kicking in and the two men beside her nodded their agreement, looking just as determined. Nagato mentioned your last name to a student named Kanoamaru Sarutobi. He is the Sandame's grandson and my Otudo, tell him you're my cousin and he will help you in any way he can. Naruto looked at his cousin who nodded, making a mental note to find this Kanoamaru while Tobarama had to wonder how old his student was if he had grandchildren now. Finally Tusan, Kusan, Itachi, Abito and myself will be coming in from behind the Hokage Monument. I'll summon Kurama there and that alone will scare off the root ninja and if Kurama is shown as someone who is helping retake the village instead of destroying it, he will not be seen as a horrible monster anymore. While Kurama is doing that we will make our way to the arena to face off against Danzo, where Shikamaru will meet up with us. When it is all finally finished we will send up the Uzumaki clan spiral as a signal once more. Team 1 will meet with Team 2 at the academy before meeting the rest of us at the Senju estate. Am I understood? Naruto finished outlining his plan to the group. Hi. The room answered him and Naruto moved away from the map to let Team 1 and 2 start to memorize their needed routes and backup routes. Are any of them injured? Naruto asked Shikamaru in a low tone as the two leaned against the far wall watching the room. Bruised and covered in dirt and some cuts, showing they put up a good fight before they were taken but no fatal injuries. Just some old-fashioned anger and glares all aimed at Danzo. He has two bodyguards with him. It's Sai and Shino's childhood friend slash brother Toriyun Aburame. Shikamaru reported in a voice just as low as Naruto's. Damn. That must be destroying Shino. Naruto rubbed a hand over his forehead. He looked like he was having a hard time trying to keep it together. Shikamaru admitted. 
I want to talk with you two for a minute if that's all right. Minato stood in front of the two chunins. Of course too, San. Naruto said, his whole demeanor brightening at the sight of his father. I have a theory that's been swimming around in my head for a while now, just let me know if I'm completely off base here or not. I think you two are time travelers. Minato said in a very low voice. You know you and Shikas Tusen should really have a shogi match, I would love to see who wins. Naruto said laughing a bit. You are correct Yandame sama Shikamaru inclined his head and Minato let out a puff of air. Was the future truly that horrific? Minato asked worried about the answer he would get. That battle we just fought? It went much worse in our timeline, so bad the Fourth Shinobi War became the last war as every single person in the Five Nations was dragged into it and destroyed, Shika and I were dying when Kurama did a space-time jutsu and brought us back to our genin days to make sure none of those events came to pass and I have to say we did a damn good job. Naruto explained. How old are you two really? Minato asked, shoulders slumped and a dark hollow look appearing on his face, he had fought in the Third Shinobi War and that was awful on many levels. He could not imagine what the fourth that destroyed the five nations could have been like. In body we are both thirteen-year-old freshly minted chunins, but mentally in shirka slash ability-wise? We are either sixteen or seventeen maybe even eighteen, time merges together when you're always on the front lines. I'm at a level higher than elite Janin, but below Kage and NR is on a completely higher and different level than Kage. Shikamaru answered honestly. Oh God. Minato breathed out. Don't worry about it too San, things are solved. There will be no war if we have any say in it and we will be able to have a childhood again, everyone will and we can all be together again. Naruto said cheerfully, hugging his father around the waist happily inhaling his scent trying to memorize it. Minato desperately hugged his son back and Shikamaru smiled happily at the sight before him, finally Naruto would have a real family and he would no longer be alone, in the blood relation aspect. Forward slash. Danzo couldn't help but feel victorious as he looked down at the barrier holding Kanoa's finest, many feet below him. He was sitting on the Hokage's chair in the box that housed the Kages during the Chunin exams, flanked by two of his best and youngest root members Sai and Torian. The one fly in his good mood was that there was no news of the Kazama twins, Narayer and Jinshuriki brat from any of his root trackers he had sent out. It was like the four had disappeared from the face of the earth, he scowled and stood up from his chair and made his way down to the arena's floor to question the shinobi about the missing chunins and jounins. Are you comfortable? Danzo asked mockingly as he approached the barrier. The jenins looked exhausted, covered in dirt, bruises and blood. They had been herded into the center of the barrier by their dirted, bruised, and bloodied senseis who had formed a protective ring around the group while the heads of the Inoshika Cho clans, the Sandame and the two Sanans made up the outer ring. What do you want Danzo? Tsunade spat in anger, she hated this man more than she had ever hated anyone before, she could not even make a move, because if she did then who knows what this horrible man would do to the children he had trapped in the academy. I want information on the locations of Akira and Akito Kazama, Shikamaru Nara and Naruto Uzumaki. Danzo ordered, noticing how all of them tensed up at his words. So you haven't found them yet? Tsunade asked, pride in her voice. I would not test my patience, Lady Tsunade. Danzo spat out. I simply wish to know where they are. You will never find them. Jiraiya said confidently. I will find them, I will never stop searching until I have them in my grasp. See Akira and Akito have been a pain in my side since they appeared during the Chunin exams and I want them dead. Shikamaru Nara on the other will make an excellent addition to Root, his strategic mind and clan abilities will make him a perfect tracker and assassin. Danzo explained smugly. Shikaku growled and Jiraiya had to stop him from doing anything foolish while Inoichi and Choza had to hold Ino and Shoji down at hearing the threat against their teammate-slash-childhood friend. Asuma gritted his teeth harshly and Karinai gripped his forearm tightly to stop him from moving towards Danzo. Now Naruto Uzumaki, how amazing will it be to have the Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tail Fox at my beck and call? He and the Tailed Beast will be my ultimate weapon, 
with them at my command the five nations will fall under my control. Danzo said, a glimpse of insanity shone in his one visible eye. The Jenins guessed in shock at this new information, they had no idea Naruto was the Jinchuriki for the nine-tailed fox that had destroyed the village twelve years ago, but when they talked in hushed tones amongst themselves and soothing words from Irika sensei who was standing by Kakashi, they decided Naruto was Naruto, not a demon fox and things just made more sense about his abilities and why the villagers hate him. Iruka almost used his big head jutsu to get them to understand, but when he pointed out what Naruto had done for each of them and how he was, the genin realized that he was still the blonde they knew. You will not be getting your hands on any of them. Hiruzen swore, still protective of his citizens more so of Naruto and his best friend Shikamaru. A hawk flew down and landed on Danzo's shoulder holding a message. Danzo scanned the message and smirked pleased before the hawk flew off. I had some of my members do some digging. It appears that Akira and Akito were just henged bunchins this whole time, created by Shikamaru Nara and Naruto Uzumaki. Those two are more powerful and smarter than I first thought, they will be perfect pawns for me. Danzo smirked at the confused and outraged looks on the shinobis before him. Suddenly a loud boom echoed across the village as smoke rose up from the front gates. Every head snapped over to look and to their utter confusion and surprise Gamabunta and Katsuyu appeared from within the smoke, making their way through the large gate. How is that possible? Danzo roared in anger glaring harshly at the two Sanans who looked just as confused as he felt. Jiraiya knew Naruto could have summoned Gamabunta, but Katsuyu was a complete mystery, Tsunade still had the contract and no one else had signed it even if the Godain planned on letting Sakura sign it later on in her training. Don't look at us. Jiraiya said holding his hands up before another loud boom was heard and smoke appeared from behind the Hokage monument. All the heads turned in that direction and to their horror slash surprise, a huge bright red nine-tailed fox rose up from and he let out a loud roar as he made his way down towards the village. No, no that is not possible. Danzo screeched in anger slash terror. Naruto. Jiraiya whispered in horror, if the nine tails had been released then that meant. He can't be. Tsunade placed a hand over her mouth, she knew giving that brat the Shodai's necklace would get him killed. What does that mean? Sakura asked Kakashi worried, the copy nin's eye drooped. If the Nine Tails has appeared like this, that means. The Jinchuriki is dead and the seal has been broken. Kakashi said miserably and many of the genin gasped in shock and all eyes moved back to the Nine Tails. Oh calm down, your screaming is hurting my ears. I'm not here to destroy anything, I'm just here to stop Root and Danzo from taking over your damn village at the request of the blonde brat. Kurama grumbled, voice heard throughout Kanoha. This calmed the ninja's fears of Naruto being dead, but it only brought up more questions. That should not be possible. Danzo hissed, he spun on his heels and his eye was brought to the box where Sai and Torian were standing, or at least were supposed to be standing. They were unconscious and tied to the chairs there with ninja wire, all done silently without Danzo noticing. You better get used to the impossible Danzo. Akira called out as he and Akito dropped down into the stadium, smoke covering the two as they went. Out of the smoke came Naruto and Shikamaru in battle-worn outfits. The two landed in different positions, Naruto stood with his flame design cloak billowing in the breeze and arms crossed, Raijin at his waist. Shikamaru was kneeling next to the blonde with a smirk on his lips, Kage no Eji gripped loosely in a horizontal position in his right hand that was thrown over his bent right knee and a trench knife on his left hand ready for use. His usually pulled back hair was down around his shoulders. You two really are Akira and Akito Kazama. Danzo said in triumph. Guilty as charged. Naruto wiggled his fingers at the others in the barrier. How else were we going to save the Sandame and kill Orochimaru? Shikamaru asked raising an eyebrow. No one would have believed two genins did it, so we had to make a plan. We are sorry for lying to you, but it was necessary to save the village from the invasion by Odo. Naruto said looking guilty at his precious people behind the barrier. Oishika, what happened to your hair? 
Naruto eyed the Nara whose long black hair was hanging by his shoulders, strands in his eyes. One of the deer was thrilled to see me, but didn't want me to go. Shikamaru said blowing a strand of his hair out of his eyes annoyed. Naruto just snickered at the sight and the annoyed look Shikamaru was now sporting. Enough! Shikamaru Nara and Naruto Uzumaki, submit yourselves to me and I will not kill your friends here. Danzo ordered stepping towards Naruto and Shikamaru. Don't you ever come near my son or his best friend Danzo. Minato snarled as he appeared in a yellow flash next to his son, Kushinat appearing next to him in a swirl of leaves. I don't like what you did to my family Danzo, you're going to pay for that. Kushina cracked her fists, hair flowing up behind her like Kurama's tails. Get in line. Itachi grunted as he and Abito appeared on the free side of Shikamaru. You're late. Naruto said casually to the S-rank Rouge Ninja. I had to chase him down, he's tiring. Itachi said in his defense, eyes flickering over to the barrier finding Sasuke right away. His eyes narrowed at the dried blood and bruise on his little brother's face and around his neck, Sasuke was looking back at Itachi with wide eyes. I like to think I'm exciting. I hadn't seen the village properly in years. Abito whined waving cheerfully at Kakashi who had stumbled back a few steps making Irika steady him. I blame you, I blame you completely. Naruto deadpanned to Itachi who smirked a bit. Why is he covered in bandages? It's worse than Kakashi's mask. Abito wrinkled his nose as he took in what Danzo looked like. T the Yandame and Itachi Uchiha. Danzo stammered his victorious feeling disappearing as it gave way to fear and his mind spun trying to think of a way out of this. Just sit tight guys, we'll finish Danzo off once and for all and then we'll all sit down and have a nice long talk. Naruto promised the others who were all staring at the group in utter shock, eyes narrowing as he took in their states. If you make one move against me, I'll shrink the barrier and all of them will be killed. Danzo cried out in triumph. Just try it. Naruto snarled. Danzo went to make the needed hand seal, but found he couldn't move his body at all. W what? He shouted in outrage. Cage main shuriken no jutsu, shadow possession shuriken jutsu, successful. Shikamaru said smugly dropping his now empty left arm. Danzo's shadow was pinned to the ground behind him with Shikamaru's trench knife. Shikaku and Asuma looked proud if a bit confused at the perfect use of both their signature justu slash weapon. You are getting really sneaky when using that. Naruto commented. Thanks, I practiced by following the other teams around and catching them off guard. Shikamaru said smugly as he stood up. It's time for you to show everyone what's under those bandages Danzo. Naruto commented lazily and with a flick of his wrist Shikamaru shot forward and with one fluid slash the Nara had sliced open all the bandages, the cloth being eaten away by darkness. Jiraiya, Hiruzen and Shikaku's eyes widened slightly at the use of the exact same technique and movements as Akito had used during the invasion thus proving to them that Naruto and Shikamaru were truly Akira and Akito Kazama. The head of the Nara clan nodded to himself, things were starting to line up. With the bandages gone, there was nothing to stop everyone in the arena from seeing how Danzo's body was covered in hundreds of Sharingan eyes. Sasuke slapped his hands over his mouth to stop himself from retching, Sakura gripped his elbow in silent support while the Sandame rubbed the young Uchiha's shoulders. Itachi let out an audible snarl at the sight before him as his own Sharingan appeared while Abito hissed like an injured cat at the sight. Sure he had hated his clan's way of thinking but this was not what should have happened to them. You bastard! Kushina screamed, Makoto Uchiha had been her best friend and she had other friends among the clan that possessed the Sharingan. Naruto, normally I would not condone killing a man without a fair trial, but for Danzo, I think what needs to happen is clear. Minato's face was thunderous. Together then Itachi? Naruto nodded at his two-san. If we must. Itachi agreed, Naruto smirked and closed his eyes. Orange-red markings appeared over his eyelids showing he was in sage mode, his pupils slitted and his canines grew as his whiskers darkened. 
Orange Churka outlined him and formed nine tails as Kurama roared with power in the background, already done his job and currently trying to doze behind the Hokage monument before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. He vaguely heard Jiraiya protesting at Naruto using the power, at forming too many tails, but he just went on with what he was doing and combined his power with the newly returned Kuramas. For the crimes you have committed against my family, the Uchihas, and countless others you are sentenced to die. Naruto said in an emotionless ANBU tone of voice, his voice merging with Kurama's deeper one. Itachi used his Sharingan and black flames of his Amaterasu covered the left half of Danzo's body making the man cry out in pain and fear, blood started to seep out of Itachi's right eye. Seeing this Naruto leapt forward in sync with Kurama and shoved his claw's hand through Danzo's chest, having made a small Rasengan in his palm beforehand. It's over. Naruto said with his and Kurama's voice forming a dual tone as he jumped back as Itachi's Amaterasu ate away at the rest of Danzo's body leaving nothing but ash in its place. Itachi let his eyes fade back to Onyx and wiped away the blood as Naruto let his Churka Shroud fade away along with Sage Mode. So Tsunade, do you want to do the honors of breaking the seal or do you want me to take a look at it? Minato asked curiously as the group approached the barrier holding the stunned silent group. Is that truly you, Minato? Tsunade asked, the first to break the silence. Pretty sure. Minato laughed after he checked out his limbs and hair. Oh yeah, it's him. Jiraiya smiled brightly. Did you get whiter, Jiraiya-sensei? Minato asked curiously. Brat. Jiraiya grunted fondly. Kakashi, you're all grown up. Minato grinned proudly as his eyes found his old student. If you're really back Minato-sensei, then. Kakashi stepped forward eyeing both his sensei and best friend. I'm really here too Kakashi. Abito Uchiha at your service. Abito snapped off a playful salute to the copy mean. Abito, I don't understand. Kakashi shook his head, suddenly the barrier pulsed once, twice before it fell away into nothing. You guys were busy so I figured I would get rid of the barrier. Naruto said innocently at the wide-eyed looks he was getting while Shikamaru stood nearby, making hand signs. He balanced himself on his feet before he leaned his head back, curling his fingers around his mouth as he blew out a large stream of fire into the air and it took the form of the Uzumaki spiral. The others should be heading towards the Senju estate, we should get there as well. I'm not sure how people will take seeing an S-rank rouge ninja and three dead ninjas out and about at this moment in time. Shikamaru reminded Naruto before he grunted as Ino flew at him, tackling him to the ground in a hug, tears in her eyes. You are an idiot Ino shouted at him, hugging him tightly. Kushina took this chance and pounced on Kakashi, hugging him and pinching his cheeks ranting about how she always knew he would grow up to be so handsome while Abito snickered at Kakashi's expense. Don't you ever scare us like that again, Shikamaru. Choji added in as he stood beside the down Shikamaru. Yeah, I promise. Shikamaru hugged Ino back, rubbing her back soothingly. Need a hand? Asuma offered his hand to his student once Ino finally released him. Thanks, Asuma sensei. Shikamaru smiled in relief as Asuma pulled him back to his feet and surprised him by then pulling him into a hug. I'm glad you're okay. Asuma breathed out smelling like cigarette smoke and cologne. Likewise, Sensei. Shikamaru said as he hugged his Sensei back before he was released and his father hugged him tightly. I understand now, son, I am sorry, but I'm glad you came back. Shikaku whispered in his son's ear. Shikamaru let out a happy smile and hugged his father back, burying his face in his neck just reveling in the fact he was there and alive. Inoichi and Choza both ruffled Shikamaru's hair the best they could as Shikaku refused to release his hold on his son. Get over here Naruto. Jiraiya waved Naruto over, the blonde shuffled over and stood under his godfather's all-seeing eyes. I'd like to say I'm upset, but that would be a lie. Jiraiya murmured. So? You don't hate me? Naruto asked, finding his voice small, very unlike his usual self. Hate you? Never in a million years, I want some explanations of course, but I'm just. 
Jiraiya couldn't put it into words. Seeing the man Naruto was turning into, how he brought his student and his wife were back, reuniting Kakashi and Abito, Jiraiya couldn't find the right words. Proud, I'm proud. Jiraiya decided on, it wasn't all of what he wanted to express, but it was a start. Naruto's face just lit up with a beaming smile and Jiraiya found that maybe that word was perfect. You little brat. Tsunade stormed over to the two, the blonde tensing for punches at the very least, but instead the current blonde Hokage dragged the future blonde Hokage into a tight hug, stroking his hair. Never do anything so reckless again. Tsunade scolded as Naruto hugged her back. No promises, Bachan. Naruto said cheekily, Tsunade let out a choking-like laugh before releasing him. Pain bloomed over the back of his head, Naruto yelped and held onto his aching head. Ah, Sakura, why would you do that? Naruto whined foregoing the chan, knowing it was his pink-haired teammate without looking. You are a complete idiot. I, I really thought you were dead. Idiot. Sakura shouted, whacking the blonde a few more times for good measure trying to hid the fact she looked as teary as Eno had. I'm sorry I worried you Sakura, but I can feel that all your training with Bachan is paying off. Naruto beamed at her and she smiled back proud at his words. The same feeling she got when Akira had praised her skills, cementing the fact that Naruto and Shikamaru were Akira and Akito. Kashini-san Naruto leapt at his unsuspecting older brother slash Jonin sensei, the copy name staggered back under the weight of the small blonde who was attaching himself to his waist and dragging Iraka in for a group hug not getting any complaints from either one of the older men as they hugged their little brother back. Meanwhile Sasuke had managed to shake off the Sandame's hand on his shoulder and he rushed towards Itachi, the S-rank missing Nin looked a bit wary at his approaching brother but all wariness disappeared when Sasuke foregoing his I'm better than now persona threw his arms around his older brother's waist, hugging him tightly as he used to when he was a child. Nisan, I forgive you, just don't leave me alone anymore. Sasuke muttered loud enough for Itachi to hear. I'm not going anywhere, if I do I'm sure you wouldn't be opposed to coming with me. Itachi hugged his little brother back, a warm feeling he hadn't felt since he was a boy spread through his chest. So you two are really Akira and Akito? Ten Ten asked as the team surrounded Shikamaru and Naruto once they had been released by their family members. Yup, sorry for the deception. Naruto said glancing at the Sandame who was talking with Minato and Kushina. So Shikamaru you are Akito? Kiba turned to the Nara who was pulling his hair up once more thanks to the spare hair tie Ino lent him. That's right. Shikamaru nodded as Akamaru climbed up Naruto's body happily nuzzling the blonde who was laughing slightly. So that means you beat Sasuke into the ground with ease. Kiba's grin just became larger. I guess so. Shikamaru's lips twitched. Boy, we better get to the meeting point, they will be wondering where we are. Naruto said glancing at the Nara, placing Akamaru into Hinata's arms, giving her a beaming smile making her blush brightly muttering something about her being happy Naruto was okay. Do you really have the heart to break up this reunion? Shikamaru asked indicating to Itachi and Sasuke talking, Abito and Kakashi making fun of each other while Minato and Kushina were talking with Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Hiruzen. Yup. Naruto smirked and threw his arms up to the sides, his orange-red churka chains flew out of him, a chain wrapping around the waist of Shikamaru, Itachi, Abito, Minato, and Kushina. See you guys at the Senju estate once everything is back to normal. Naruto waved at the others as he floated up into the air using his justu from the failed invasion attempt pulling the others along with him. Naruto! Shikamaru roared at the blondinoid, Abito and Kushina hooped happily while Minato and Itachi just sighed as they were whisked out of sight towards the Senju estate where the others were waiting leaving the Kanoha ninjas behind. Those better be some damn good answers. Tsunade rubbed her forehead. Just like Kushina. Jiraiya laughed cheerfully. Can we come and hear what they have to say as well, my lady? Sakura asked her sensei hopefully. Of course, you all deserve to get some answers as well, 
For the moment, however, we have to make sure the village and its citizens are all right and we have to ship the root members off to INT to figure out how to deprogram them. Tsunade nodded her head and the group got to work. Forward slash. So I think our huge reveal went rather well. Naruto said, dropping into the shade under a large tree in the backyard of the Senju estate, Shikamaru sitting beside him with the others scattered around the yard. It's all finally over. Shikamaru said looking up at the blue sky through the leaves of the tree, the shadow and the sunlight casting a beautiful pattern on the two chunins below. I never thought I would see the day, I'm just really happy. Naruto grinned, rubbing his hand across his eyes. Me too and AR. Shikamaru smiled widely, it setting in that they had done it. They had stopped so many horrible things from happening. Sure they would always be conflict, but he knew that they could handle anything compared to what they had gone though. You were right Naruto, as soon as Kano Amaru heard I was your cousin he was very helpful and accepted us right away. Nagato reported to his cousin. Watch out, you'll be expected to come play ninja with us now. Naruto teased. I do not think I would mind that. Nagato admitted softly. Welcome to Kanoha Nagato, it can become home for you, Conan and Yahiko, just say the word. Naruto promised. Thank you Naruto Uzumaki. Nagato bowed his head in respect and Naruto just waved it off. Well Shika, we have some time to kill. What do you say to a spar? Naruto asked excitedly. We just finished fighting and you want to fight more? I demand a nap, at the very least. Shikamaru raised his eyebrows at the blonde. You make a valid point. Naruto said as all previous excitement was drained out of him as it hit him how exhausted he truly was. Wake us when the others are in view. Shikamaru looked at the others before and Naruto leaned against the other and the tree behind them and in seconds the two were fast asleep. I think Naruto has spent too much time with Shikamaru, he's even napping like a Nara now. Kushina giggled as she brushed her son's bangs out of his face. So you are the Yandame Hokage then? Hashirama walked over to Minato with an excited look that could rival Naruto's. I am. Minato nodded at the Shodai. We should spar. I want to see your skills. Hashirama grinned. Sure. Minato said always having wanted to see the Shodai in action close up. No you will not. Mito and Kushina both grabbed their husbands by their ears dragging them away from the other. You will wake the children and if you do. Kushina let her threat trail off while Mito blared fiercely at her husband. Hi. Both men cowered under the fire of their wives' glares, it must be an Uzumaki thing. They are approaching. Conan reported as a flurry of paper returned to her outstretched arms, a small smile appearing on her face when she spotted Jiraiya among them. Time to wake up Narochan. Kushina cooed as she slowly woke Naruto up, the blonde kicking Shikamaru as he did so. The Nara grumbled annoyed, rubbing at his knee where the blonde had made contact. Um ke ka -san. Naruto muttered as he rubbed his eyes, making Kushina squeal at her son's adorableness. This should be fun. Shikamaru grunted as he and Naruto dragged themselves to the front of the house to meet the other group. Shika-chan. Naru-chan. I was so worried. Yoshino shouted as she dragged her boys into a tight hug. Ka-san can't breathe. Shikamaru gasped out. Yoshino released the two and looked them up and down for injuries, taking in their dirt-covered clothing and the way Shikamaru was shielding his right side. You're hurt Shikamaru. Yoshino said waving Tsunade over to check her son over. Cracked rib, it must have been causing you pain. Why didn't you say anything? Tsunade clicked her tongue annoyed as she moved her glowing green hand over Shikamaru's right side. What did I say about hiding wounds from Mishika? Naruto asked sweetly, Shikamaru, after Tsunade healed his rib, backed away from the blonde. We had other things to worry about. Shikamaru protested before he yelped as Naruto sent a herd of bunshins at the Nara, 
tackling him to the ground and shouting at how he was an idiot. Now that we've taken care of that, come meet the others. Naruto said cheerfully once his bunshins disappeared and he dragged Shikamaru behind him much to the amusement of the others. The newly arrived group walked into the backyard and froze at the sight before them, they had gotten used to the idea of Minato, Kushina, Abito and Itachi being back, but seeing Hashirama, Mito, Tobarama, Nagato, Konan and Yahiko standing there casually made their minds freeze up. There's my little granddaughter. Hashirama cried out at the sight of Tsunade, he swept her up in a tight hug. You followed in my footsteps becoming Godame Hokage, the first lady Hokage of Kanoha, and the village isn't in debt. Oh, I am so proud of you. Hashirama ranted as he rubbed his cheek against Tsunade's. Tobarama slapped his palm against his forehead at his older brother's antics, sometimes he wondered if the two were really related. You are overwhelming the poor girl. Mito scolded her husband, extracting her granddaughter from his hold. Let me look at you my beautiful, strong granddaughter. Grandma? Grandpa? Tsunade asked in a small voice filled with wonder. It's really a Tsunade. Mito assured her, smoothing back her blonde bangs. Tsunade gave a small smile before she hugged her grandmother tightly. Tobarama-sensei? Hiruzen asked in shock as the Nidame approached the Sandame and his son. You look well Hiruzen, I am glad. You have done a wonderful job leading this village. Tobarama said gruffly. Thank you sensei. Hiruzen smiled, feeling odd that he was once again saying those words. You must my student's son, I am Tobarama Senju the Nidame Hokage. Tobarama bowed his head to Asuma. It's a pleasure Nidame Sama, I am Asuma. Asuma bowed back in respect and awe at meeting the man of his childhood bedtime stories. Jiraiya Sensei. Nagato smiled awkwardly at the Toad Sanin who was staring at a trio in shock. Nagato, Konan, Yahiko. I don't understand, how are you three? Jiraiya trailed off. You have an amazing student Sensei, he turned my hatred around, gave us hope an offer of a home and I am proud to call him my cousin. Nagato said truthfully glancing at where Naruto was standing with Shikamaru by the other genins who were laughing at something the blonde had said. He has a way of doing that. Jiraiya smiled fondly at his godson before he broke all composure and pulled his three previous students into a group hug and was pleased when he got hugs in return. And then Shika here decided that he was going to try a new hairstyle, let's just say we had to run out of town fast. Too many people of both gender liked his hair way too much. Naruto finished a story leaving the other genin laughing, minus Sasuke who had went to be with his brother. We almost got away too, but it was those blue eyes of yours that doomed us. Shikamaru poked Naruto in the side. I can't help it if people love my baby blues. Naruto fluttered his eyes at Shikamaru who snorted. What happened? Choji asked amused at the duo. The truth was that it had happened in Suna, so Tamari and Gara had come to their rescue, more like Tamari did, Gara was too busy trying not to laugh. So the two improvised. A local heartthrob came around and distracted the group long enough for us to get out of there. Naruto said and the group odd. Naruto, I think it's time for that explanation. Minato interrupted the group, making the genins gasp like fish at the sight of the yandame so close to them and actually alive. Sure thing too, San. Naruto said brightly. T-T-O-U-S-A-N. The genins screeched drawing attention of everyone else in the yard. Yeah, Kushina Uzumaki is my Kasen and Minato Namakase the yandame Hokage is my too, San. Naruto said blankly trying to understand what the big deal was as Minato draped his arm around his son's shoulder pulling him into his side smiling kindly at the stunned genin. I'm starting to think you will never stop surprising me Naruto. Sakura rubbed her forehead. Oh Sakura, I'm just getting started. Naruto grinned. Do we finally get our explanations? Abito asked as he dragged Kakashi and Iraka who Obito had taken a liking to once he saw how Kakashi was around the Chunin, over to his sensei and his sensei's kid. Hi Obito, we will tell you all everything you want to know. 
Shikamaru nodded his head. Let's head inside, there could still be Danzo supporters around. Tsunade ordered and the large group headed into the estate, Mito falling into the role of hostess as it was her home. She gracefully led the group to the largest and most comfortable room they had. Naruto and Shikamaru grabbed a two-seat couch at the far end of the room where there were no windows and could see every angle of the room. Hashirama and Tobarama exchanged looks, that couch was the most strategically sound place in the room and usually where the two brothers sat. When everyone had found a seat in their desired seating arrangements all eyes turned to the two chunins. Naruto looked around the room and any happy or goofy look he had before draining away in an instant as Shikamaru's face took an emotionless state much like an ANBU. All your questions can be answered in three words. Naruto said grimly, shaking his head a bit as the dead forms of everyone in the room flashed over their present forms, they had never all been in the same room at once and he couldn't stop his memories completely. We're time travelers. Shikamaru deadpanned to the silent room. Some showed understanding as things clicked into place while others showed disbelief. That confirms my theory. Shikaku sighed out while Minato nodded along already having heard the truth from his son and Shikamaru previously. You cannot expect us to believe this. Kiba sputtered, Akamaru nipped harshly at his partner's fingers before he leapt up onto the couch and settled on Shikamaru's lap. Shikamaru gave a smile and petted Akamaru the way he liked to be petted. It's much easier to pet you when you're this small, when you became bigger than Kiba it was more difficult. Shikamaru laughed and Kiba's mouth opened and shut trying to imagine that. Finally something that makes sense. Abito nodded his head, crossing his arms. It would explain why you two are so powerful. Hashirama nodded, gaining a proud look from the Chunin's parents and senseis. The others just looked at the twelve-year-olds who were playing with Akamaru, the Shodai Hokage said those two were so powerful. It also explains how you knew exactly what Madara Uchiha, Zetsu and Kagaya were planning and how to counter them before it turned into a full-out war that would involve the five nations. I am correct to assume that is what happened in your future. Tobarama theorized, crossing his arms, Shikamaru nodded gravely. Madara Uchiha? The Sandame's head snapped to the side. Zetsu, as in the Akatsuki member? Jiraiya stared at Naruto with worry. Believe it or not, Zetsu was the true brains behind the Akatsuki. He is annoying as the white half of him can make millions bunchins of himself, but his plan was deadly the first time around. Naruto said as he raised his hand, Akamaru barking a bit as he jumped up at the limb. Wait, wait. What about the other members of the Akatsuki? Jiraiya waved his hands as he looked at Nagato, Konan, Yahiko, and Itachi. Let's see Kisame didn't want anything to do with our battle so he left to roam for a while until he comes to annoy Itachi. Naruto said after a moment of thought, Itachi scowled at the reminder. I took out Haydn. Shikamaru said, pleased at the memory. Haydn, the immortal Haydn? Jiraiya was looking at Shikamaru with more respect while Shikamaru's parents and team looked worried at the Toad Sanin's words. That's the one, I immobilized him and sealed him in a scroll. Shikamaru cut in before any more questions about the bastard were asked. Gara got Deidara and Sasori, he was far too pleased about that. Naruto chuckled at the stunned looks on Jiraiya and Tsunade's faces. Oh, right. Gara and all the other Jinchurikis are time travelers as well. Well, not the same way we are, when I fixed each of their seals Karama's Churka merged with theirs so their memories and abilities returned. I have to say having our Godame Kazakage back helped move things along. Naruto said casually. Gara is going to be Godame Kazakage? Lee asked amazed at the fact he fought a future Kage. They are a force to be reckoned with when together. Tobarama muttered. Then once we got Nagato and Konan on our side we hunted down Kakuzu, with them holding him in place Shikamaru and I sent two high-powered Raisingans at him, destroying all five of his hearts before he could detach them. Naruto said smugly. You can both do Raisingans? Minato asked surprised. Naruto lost a bet and taught me the Raisingan. 
Shikamaru said with a smirk. Hey, I mastered mine in a week. You took a month. Naruto poked Shikamaru in the side. All users of the Raisingen's mouths dropped, it only took him a week to learn it? Yeah, but to add my kage, it didn't take nearly as long as it did when you were adding in your futon. Shikamaru shot back with a smirk and more stares were given to the two. You perfected it. Minato's face lit up with a grin, he knew his son could do what he couldn't. I do believe they need a demonstration shika. Naruto said eyeing the disbelieving looks. Troublesome. Kage, Raisingen. Shikamaru held his right hand out, bracing his wrist with his left hand, while Naruto held up his right palm simply. Futon, Rasen Shuriken. Naruto beamed as a high-pitched keening appear as a small Rasen Shuriken appeared in his palm while blue churka and black shadows swirled around in Shikamaru's right palm. Trust us, this time around the Akatsuki didn't stand a chance. Naruto said smugly as he and Shikamaru let their jutsu disappear. Then what happened last time? Niji asked cautiously. There was a lot of death and destruction. Naruto said simply, not willing to say much more. What else happened? Karinai asked softly. It's better if you all don't know the details of the war and how people died. Shikamaru shook his head. In other words he and Naruto were unsure if they could handle reliving the war, it was officially a different future and should have no effect on the future they were heading towards now. That future has been averted, all we did was bring back the previous Hokages like what happened in our timeline with the Edo Tensei, the Shinigami himself granted our just a success, did some convincing and made genius plans. All in all I'd say that was a damn good training trip. Naruto said smugly. Speaking of, Akira and Akito Kazama. Explain. Now. Tsunade threatened the two, cracking her fists. Basically when we said we had seer blood we were in truth, talking about our future and what happened then. Naruto said glancing at the sandame with sad eyes. So in your future I was killed by Orochimaru during the invasion and... Hiruzen trailed off. Three years from then the fourth shinobi war began, it raised the five nations to the ground, everyone everywhere were destroyed. There was nothing left. Shikamaru said simply as everyone wincing at his words. Why do I have the feeling what you two told us what happened with Orochimaru in the forest of death wasn't completely accurate? Asuma raised his eyebrows at the two. We just omitted some parts you didn't need to know about at the time. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. For example, the reason Orochimaru had a mismatched arm was because NAR tore the other one off. Shikamaru said proudly. Don't sell yourself short Shika, you killed Kabuto taking out one of the strongest yet annoying players in the war. No Kabuto equals no mass at Otensei. Naruto said just as proudly while Jiraiya blanched at the mention of a mass at Otensei. Killing him did feel amazing. Shikamaru admitted to everyone's shock. What did he do that was so horrible? Yoshino asked her son, working past her shock of her son taking pleasure in killing someone. Imagine all your previously dead allies and enemies coming back to life, no control over their actions but still conscious only able to watch as they attack and kill their loved ones. While their loved ones have to struggle to take them down. Naruto said with no emotion while Shikamaru gritted his teeth and subconsciously rubbed the wound that was killing him in the previous timeline that he received from the reanimated Choji. That bastard. Yoshino hissed in anger as others agreed with her and the genin went pale white at the mere words. Basically why I killed him the forest. Shikamaru nodded his head. So let me get this straight, you two were the only survivors of the fourth shinobi war in all of the five nations, I'm assuming the nine tails did a space-time jutsu to bring you two back to your genin days where you proceeded to make plans to stop deaths and bring about a brighter, warless future? Tsunade asked in awe. That sounds right Bachan. Naruto nodded his head after a moment of thought. 
Then you went on to use the Yedo Tensei to bring back the Shodai, his wife, the Naidame, the Yandame, his wife and Yahiko's soul back to his body after convincing three previous Akatsuki members to join your cause while becoming Chunins, taking out Orochimaru and Kabuto along with destroying the rest of the Akatsuki and bringing all nine Jinchurikis together? Only then you decided to use your aliases that you used to save the Sandame and the village to leave said village to gather all previously mentioned allies together so you can go fight a battle to stop an upcoming war while keeping everything a secret from all of us? Jiraiya summed up once more. Well when you put it like that it sounds kind of impressive, but yeah basically. Shikamaru mused. Just how much have you been holding back in training Narochan? Kakashi eyed his little brother in shock. Oh Kashini-san if I went full out against you, you wouldn't last a minute. Naruto laughed cheerfully. Understatement. Hashirama muttered much to the room's amazement. I think we deserve to hear your ranks at the very least. Shikako stated looking at his son and the blonde he now saw as part of his clan. Shikamaru Nara, the last of the Nara clan. Chief strategist for the Allied Shinobi forces, personal advisor to the Rokadame Hokage and commander of the Allied Shinobi forces ANBU squads. I am higher than elite Jounin, but below Kage. Shikamaru said strongly gaining gasps from the room. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the last of both my clans. Rokadame Hokage, leader of the Allied Shinobi forces, Seal Master, Toad Sage and Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox. Shikamaru said that I'm officially ranked as a Kage, but my power is on a completely different and higher level than Kage. Naruto said just as strongly getting most gasps from the room. Damn that sounds cool. Naruto laughed and Shikamaru rolled his eyes fondly at the blonde. That's because you are cool, remember? Guy and Lee said so at your coronation. Shikamaru reminded the blonde while the mentioned ninja perked up at their names. Oh yeah, they managed to drag Niji and Ten Ten into dancing with them. It made my night. Naruto laughed while Niji and Ten Ten looked horrified at the mere idea of doing so. Any other questions, or can Shika and I go sleep? Saving the future is exhausting and it's only now sinking in that we have stopped our future from happening. Naruto spoke honestly as he stood up, stretching his arms before he dragged the Nara up off the couch pretending he didn't hear the wine he was getting. Go rest, we'll wake you two up for dinner. Kushina promised dropping a kiss to Naruto's forehead while Yoshino did the same for Shikamaru, neither of them backing away embarrassed like normal kids their age would. The two stumbled out of the room pushing at each other playfully leaving a room full of stunned people behind them. Naruto dragged Shikamaru into his room and the two without a word got into more comfortable sleep clothes and curled up on the large bed, the other's presence soothing and before long they fell asleep to the other's churka feeling and the numerous churka sources below the floor. Kakashi dear, go wake up your Otudo. Kushina called sweetly to the Jounin who was sitting with the Iraka and the other Jounins introducing Abito to them once again. Kakashi just stood up, brushing his pants off, as he knew better than to disobey Kushina when she used that sweet tone of voice even after all this time. If it's anything like the last time we had to wake them I'll come too. Asuma spoke up, following Kakashi up the stairs passing Sasuke and Itachi who were sitting by Tsunade as the Godain took a look at the older Uchiha's eyes as he had an illness thanks to overuse of his Sharingan. The two Jonins entered Naruto's room to see both time travelers fast asleep curled towards each other, peaceful looks on their faces like all the weight of the world had finally lifted off their shoulders and in a way it had been. I don't want to wake them, but they need to eat. Asuma muttered to Kakashi who nodded his agreement. Kakashi and Asuma went to their students' sides and gently woke the two up, wary of their battle reflexes that they now knew the two possessed. Ah, uh, wah? Naruto asked groggily as he rubbed his eyes as he sat up, the shoulder of his green shirt slipping down his arm overall looking adorable and very young. It's time to eat Narochan. Kakashi gave an eye smile. Um K Kashi Nisan. Naruto suddenly was a blur as he jumped onto Kakashi's back, making his sensei give him a piggyback. Onwards Nisan. Naruto said cheerfully. Once you mention food it's all over. Shikamaru said knowingly. 
You don't need a piggyback ride, do you? Asuma raised an eyebrow. Nah, I could use a cigarette, though. Shikamaru said honestly as he slid out of the bed. What? Asuma asked in shock. I thought you hated smoking? The smoke always gets in my eyes and Karina always gets on my case whenever she catches me. Shikamaru grumbled as he stumbled out of the room, his sensei by his side. As she should, it's a horrible habit, more so for someone so young. Asuma lectured. I understand why you smoke now. Shikamaru glanced at his sensei with a sad smile and it struck Asuma how old Shikamaru's eyes looked. Promise me you won't take it up this time. Asuma stopped Shikamaru before they went down the stairs. I don't have a reason to this time. Shikamaru promised. Just don't die on me. Shikamaru brushed past Asuma and headed down the stairs leaving his sensei stunned. He was the reason why Shikamaru had started to smoke, it must have hit him extremely hard. He shook his head and mentally promised Shikamaru that he wouldn't die anytime soon. Oh, I have missed this. Naruto inhaled his plate of food that Yoshino had made for the large group with the help of Kushina, Mito, Choji, Choza, Minato, Hinata and Konan, who asked to be taught, who in turn had dragged Nagato and Yahiko with her. How are your training with Bachan and Gigi going? Naruto asked Sakura and Sasuke between bites of food. I'm really improving in my taijutsu and churka control, I can make a crack in the ground when I punch now. Sakura told Naruto excitedly. You'll have to fight me if you want to know how my training is going dobe. Sasuke smirked, less arrogant as he had been. I'll take it easy on you team. Naruto smirked back, the air of rivalry appearing between the two this time however it more friendly than before. So when you two were Akira and Akito and you were training us, the reason you knew exactly what we needed to work on was because you knew us in the future? Shino turned to Shikamaru and Naruto who were helping themselves to seconds. Basically, Shikamaru witnessed the processes because I was gone from the village for about three years traveling and training with Arosenin, but I think I know more than he does now. Naruto laughed at the offended look he was getting from his godfather. I doubt that. Jiraiya snorted. I don't. Naruto smirked as orange-red markings appeared over his eyelids, his pupils changing. Perfect sage mode. Brat. Jiraiya blinked in shock at the ease Naruto slipped into sage mode as Naruto let it fade away and he dug back into his food with gusto. Speaking of, Shika we are sparing after this I don't care if you want a nap or not. Naruto pointed his chopsticks at the Nara who looked up from his food with a glint in his eyes. You're on Hokage-sama, try not to be too upset when you lose. Shikamaru smirked and ducked a dumpling that Naruto sent flying at his friend's head. Taijutsu only to start with. Naruto set the rules and Shikamaru nodded in agreement not to use any weapons or other jutsus. This I've got to see. Kiba said excitedly while Lee and Guy looked very interested in the idea of seeing the two time travelers battle in Taijutsu. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Naruto bowed his head at the people who made the food, patting his stomach happily. It had been far too long since we've had a home-cooked meal. Shikamaru added in also bowing his head. It was our pleasure. Yoshino assured her boys while Kushina nodded her head in agreement. Time to spar. Naruto sang happily as he grabbed Shikamaru by the collar and dragged him out into the backyard, the others following amused and intrigued at the fight the two were going to have. The two bowed their heads after they stretched out their muscles and dropped into a stance that strongly resembled both Guy and Lee's Taijutsu stance and the Hyuga Jukenpo, gentle fist. At a silent signal Naruto launched himself at Shikamaru, completely focused on the fight. Kanoha Senpu. Kanoha Whirlwind. Naruto shouted as he slammed his leg down, Shikamaru performed a couple backward cartwheels and a handspring so he landed on a nearby tree branch to avoid the powerful kick from the blonde that left a large indent where he had been previous standing. That are Kanoha Senpoi Gai Sensei. Lee gasped at the blonde while Gai raised his large eyebrows in wonder. 
Naruto snapped his head upwards and leapt out of the dent while Shikamaru pushed himself off the tree and threw a couple Jukenpopum thrusts towards the blonde who ducked and dodged out of the way making Shikamaru's palms hit a tree trunk, the trunk shattered on impact. Shikamaru spun around and launched a basic roundhouse kick at Naruto, the blonde crossed his arms to block but he still was forced backwards from the power of the kick. Niji Nisan isn't Shikamaru Kuen using the Hyuga Jukenpo? Hinata asked loud enough for others to hear, her relationship with her cousin had been mended and now they were more along the lines of brother and sister. Hi, it closely resembles it, but the way they move and strike are different. More effective. Niji said, his Biakugan up so he could study their movements more closely. The Nara and Uzumaki Namakes got into close combat as they struck at the other relentlessly, before they suddenly leapt away from the other not breathing heavily at all. Good to know we haven't lost our touch, Niji and Lee would have kicked our asses if we forgot all they taught us. Naruto laughed as he wiped some sweat off his forehead. What do you mean we taught you that? Lee asked from the sidelines. In the war, no one cared about whose techniques belonged to what clan any longer, if it could help you get stronger you learned it as fast as you could. Besides, Shikamaru trailed off catching himself before he could say any more. Besides what? Niji pressed. After. Guy died in battle, Lee taught us all his taijutsu style in order to let Guy's legacy live on. Hinata and Niji did the same when Madara Uchiha wiped out their clan along with the rest of the village survivors. Naruto said emotionlessly, deciding not to mention that Kabuto then reanimated Guy and forced him to fight against his students, killing Tenten before Lee could seal him. When we said we were the only survivors, we were not kidding, if you don't want to know the answer to something then don't ask. You'll go crazy dwelling on something that did not happen to you. Shikamaru advised before he turned back to Naruto who tilted his head to the side. Both nodded and they knew the rules had changed, Shikamaru brought out his trench knives while Naruto pulled out Raijin. Guy, Lee, Hinata and Niji all swallowed hard but tried their best to focus on the fight to follow Shikamaru's suggestion. Asuma and Tenten looked on more interested now that weapons were being used. Asuma was interested in how well Shikamaru could actually handle the trench knives and an idea as to why Shikamaru taught himself to use them crossed into his mind. Shikamaru must have learned how to use them after he died in way to honor him. The blades clashed against each other, sending sparks flying everywhere as the two pressed back against the other. Naruto's Raijin started to come alive with ration and he managed to push Shikamaru backwards. Two can play that game and they are, let's see whose ration is stronger. Shikamaru shouted as his trench knives came alive with his own ration pushing Naruto backwards so they were back to their original spot. Waves of ration shirka pulsed over the backyard, sending some of the genin skidding backwards, their senseis or parents reaching out to steady them while they kept their eyes trained on the fight before them. The Hokages and Sanans nodded their heads impressed at the power behind the two time travelers in front of them. Naruto lashed out suddenly with his right leg while Shikamaru did the same with his left, they made contact as their blades left the others and the two left back eyeing the other. That was great! Naruto burst out laughing and Shikamaru grinned as well as the two placed their weapons back in their rightful places. How come all our spars always end in ties? Shikamaru asked as they walked over to the group. Must be because we know each other's moves too well. Naruto suggested. Oh no! Shika! Naruto suddenly stopped, Shikamaru jerked to a halt and looked back at the horror stuck Naruto concerned. What? Shikamaru asked his eyes darting around looking for threats as his body unconsciously dropped into a defensive stance. We didn't plan for this. Naruto said, eyes widening in fear. We didn't plan for Danzo to take over the village, but that's what happened and we dealt with it easy enough. What's wrong? Shikamaru said hand going to the hilt of his katana. We have to go through it again. Naruto moaned, dropping to his knees. What's wrong, Naruto? Minato asked worried as he stepped towards his son, his own senses open. Shika, we have to go through puberty again. Naruto cried out in horror, 
Shikamaru blinked once before he too fell to his knees and everyone watching had their mouths open in shock. This was what the two were freaking out about. I don't think I can handle Ino and Sakura's mood swings again. Shikamaru buried his face in his hands. Oi! Ino and Sakura shouted offended. Oh shit, I was spared that, but then... The fangirls appeared. Naruto shuddered, the Uchihas and Kakashi both shuddered understanding Naruto's fear of fangirls. That's what happens when you train 24-7 and then go from 4 feet to 6 feet. Shikamaru snorted at the blonde who was looking at his 12-year-old body, annoyed. I don't think I can stand my voice cracking again. Naruto cried out in distress as Shikamaru stood up, dusting off his knees before he whacked the blonde upside the head. Don't freak me out like that again, you idiot. Shikamaru scolded before he shoved his hands into his pants pockets and shuffled inside only to flop face down onto the closet couch. Yeah, yeah. Naruto agreed as he followed the Nara inside falling onto the end of another couch, tipping his head backwards. What are you two going to do now? Tsunade asked the two as the others joined them inside the house. Ha, huh, didn't really think about that. To be completely honest we weren't sure we were even going to live through the battle with Madara, Setsu, and Kagaya this time around, so we didn't plan too far in advance. Naruto rubbed his chin, not noticing the dark mood that covered the others in the room at his words. We have some basic ideas on how we want to merge all the nations once again to become the allied shinobi forces, but that will take time and patience. Also there is the fact we have to come up with a good reason as to why previous dead ninjas and a missing nin are back in the village without causing an uproar and then there is the council and the Hyuga clan's curse seal. Shikamaru trailed off as he pushed himself up so he was lying on his back instead of his face. Basic ideas, huh? Shikako smiled at his son while the two Hyugas stared in hope and wonder at the two time travelers who wanted to help deal with their clan's curse seal. Or we could sit back and let Bachan and the others deal with that, after I'm not Hokage anymore, Owen oh Bachan. One word in regards to paperwork. Bunshins. Naruto suggested smugly. All the Hokages in the room stared at the smug blonde before they started to grumble and mutter. Of course, why didn't I think of that? Minato grumbled. There, there dear. Mito was biting back a smile as she patted the Shodai's arm as the first Hokage was grumbling to himself. I think that's a great idea and they are. Shikamaru agreed, crossing his arms behind his head to give himself a pillow of sorts. I've had enough planning and fighting to last me a lifetime. This coming from Manara, I'm worried Shika, you live for making plans to outsmart your opponents. Naruto teased. True and as you have yet to beat me at Shogi, I can't stop using my brain just yet. Shikamaru teased. I was close last time. Naruto protested. Whatever you say in AR. Shikamaru smirked. Oh I've been wondering, why can I use sage mode now? I mean, when we first came back we were lacking Churka control. Naruto stopped as Shikamaru snorted loudly. Lacking? In AR, we had shit control. You tried to walk up the side of a tree and once your foot touched it, the trunk broke in half. Shikamaru reminded the Uzumaki Namikaze. Team 7 blinked at the words, they had been there when Naruto had learned how to walk up the side of a tree with Churka, he and Sasuke were up all night trying to do it and now Naruto could barely touch the side of a tree without it breaking. Ugh, don't remind me. Naruto covered his eyes with his hand. Try to make ten bunchins ending up making about one hundred. He muttered annoyed at the lack of control he had back then. The Sandame and Irika blinked at that, they both had seen Naruto when he first created his Kage bunchins and that was when he had control, how much Churka did the blonde really have? Back to my point. I wasn't able to even attempt sage mode until I was sixteen and I tried a lot when we first came back, but my body couldn't hold it. Now I can hold it. I don't understand how that's possible. Naruto continued on. Maybe it has something to do with that Uzumaki henge we performed before we went to gather everyone. 
Shikamaru suggested, gesturing at the people they had gathered before they fought the battle against Madara, Setsu, and Kagaya. Maybe. I have a feeling I'm going to have to visit Imtemayaboka soon. Naruto rubbed his neck with both hands as he thought. Careful what you wish for, they might reverse summon you. Shikamaru teased. The same goes for you, Shika. They haven't seen you in a while either. Naruto shot back with a smirk. Oh, you mean that giant battle deer you summoned during the battle? Abito asked sounding excited as he remembered the beautiful and dangerous doe that fought alongside them. That was Kosetsu, Snowfall, she is the chief from the Shido Shika Ikazoku, Shade Deer Clan. Shikamaru smiled, thinking of the chief deer and his katana. The Shido Shika Ikazoku? Shikaku asked curiously, edging closer to his son's side. Yeah, during the war I wanted some time to myself and came across a rundown shrine in the forest. I found the contract hidden within, signed it seeing as all the previous names were all Naras. I proved myself worthy and received Kaged no Eji, Shadow's Edge. Shikamaru explained, his father nodding along as he planned to discuss this further with his son later once everything had settled down. We will take care of everything else, you two have done so much for us, without anyone knowing it. You two deserve to have a childhood and not worry about what the future holds. Tsunade told her nephew and the Nara. Bachan, that means a lot. Naruto grinned at the blonde, fingers twirling the Shodai's necklace out of habit the Churka within the stone soothing him like it always had. Here, this will come in handy. Shikamaru pulled out a scroll, tossing it to the Godame Hokage. She caught it and silently unrolled it and her eyes widened. These are all your ideas, they are pretty detailed too. Tsunade handed the scroll over to the other Hokages who looked rather impressed. Like Naruto said, we weren't sure if we were going to survive the battle so we decided to write all our ideas for the future we wanted to create in case something happened. Shikamaru shrugged his shoulders. This will be a major help, things should go much smoother with this information and your ideas. Tsunade said her voice full of gratitude. Shikamaru nodded at the Godame before he stood up stretching his arms out. I'm going to go cloud watch, it's been ages since I've been able to do it properly. Shikamaru announced. I'm going to drag Kurama out for a spar. Naruto said cheerfully as he stood up off his couch. The two wandered out to the backyard, Shikamaru easily leapt up onto a thick tree branch and laid himself down so he was looking up at the blue, cloudy sky between the green leaves. Naruto slammed his bloodied hand against the ground by his feet and a seven-foot Kurama appeared. At least I'm not the size of a cat this time. Kurama grumbled. You would be no fun to fight against if you were that small. Naruto pointed out before he launched himself at the Nine Tails, laughing with a carefree smile on his face. The future is in good hands. Minato smiled as he watched his son spar with the tail beast, the other genins inching closer to watch the fight interested. Minato smiled wider when his son dragged the others into the fight, all of them ganging up on Kurama and they were working well together and had Kurama on the ropes much to the Ninetales' annoyance. Very good hands indeed. Minato muttered to himself as he turned to where the others were discussing plans based off of the scroll Shikamaru gave Tsunade. Three years later, Shikamaru Nara was sitting on his favorite hill overlooking the village, the clouds above slowly inching their way across the vast blue sky. He let a soft smile cross his lips as he breathed in deeply, things had been peaceful and perfect since the Danzo incident and the fallout of everything they revealed, but it only served to strengthen the bonds of the village and the other villages in the Five Nations. Sorry, I'm late Shika. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, officially recognized as a Namikaze now, called out, waving his right arm in the air as he hurried over to his best friend's side, dropping ungracefully on the green grass beside the Nara letting out an exhausted sigh. At least you made it in one piece, what happened this time? Shikamaru asked amused at the look Naruto had on his face. Once we finished training, Sakura had dragged Sasuke off for their date. Sai disappeared with Yamato Taicho to attend his rehab with the others, Sai attempted a smile today and it didn't freak us out so I think he's making progress. Naruto explained and Shikamaru smiled a bit at those words. 
Then Kakashi decided he wanted to test his right on Rasengan against my Rasen Shuriken, but thankfully before we could Abito showed up with Irika Sensei in tow. Apparently, they were late to a meeting so they dragged Kakashi off after saying Itachi wouldn't be there as he was currently stalking Sasuke and Sakura State with Tsunade as his partner in crime. I then had to run across the rooftops to avoid my fangirls and Niji as he was still pissed off by my latest prank and the fact I'm dating Hinata, overprotective cousin. I'm exhausted, even fighting a war didn't leave me this tired. Naruto finished the summary of his day. Sounds like an average day around the village. Shikamaru laughed as he leaned back on the grass next to the blonde. Where's Kurama? Oh, he's playing with some of the kids at the park, not of his own will mind you, but when he's that small he can't exactly get away from the kids. Naruto laughed loudly remembered the horror on Kurama's furry face when he was dragged away by a group of pre-academy students. Things sure have changed, haven't they? Shikamaru smiled fondly. Yeah, they sure have. Naruto smiled softly, closing his cerulean eyes. The two chunins lay in comfortable silence, they could easily be Kaige level, or higher in Naruto's case, by now, but they decided they wanted to be chunins for a while and not have to deal with the extra work that came with being higher ranks. Unofficially when they were sent on missions they were the unspoken leaders of the groups and those missions always were successes, in one way or another and they were also used as advisors, mainly Shikamaru as Naruto still managed to escape when people came after him with questions about plans, when major problems were encountered. The Kanoa 12 were all being trained differently than any previous teams, they were being trained by the best of the best. Tsunade had also created a new academy program, getting rid of the horrible senseis as well, basically a total rehaul that only Irika sensei had came out and scathed from, training them better and harder than before, giving everyone a chance even people who had no access to their churka like Lee. Tsunade had stayed on as Godame Hokage while the past Hokages all decided they would teach ninjas they deemed worthy, there were quite a few of them and every single one of them were getting stronger and stronger as days passed. The past Hokages and their wives also decided to live normal lives and only went on missions when it was 100% necessary for them to be a part of them. Minato and Jiraiya had cheerfully removed the caged bird mark from all members of the branch family of the Huba clan against the elders' wishes. Said elders were taken out of power by the combination of Hayashi Huba and Tsunade so then the two branches had merged together no longer defined by main and branch families. After it had happened Hinata found her blonde boyfriend and gave him a kiss on his lips in the middle of the street, she had tears in her eyes and thanked him repeatedly. She no longer was the blushing and stammering mess that she used to be, her training with Kushina and Mito really paid off and Shikamaru had often found Naruto crying dramatically to his two san about how the Uzumaki woman were turning his sweet stammering Hinata into a force of nature, Minato just patted his son's shoulder in sympathy, understanding his pain all too well. On the other hand Niji had simply clasped Naruto in Shikamaru's forearms and nodded his head with a genuine smile as his thanks and if his eyes were a bit misty no one commented on it even if his girlfriend Ten Ten did tease him about it when they were training to rile him up. Gara had become Godame Kazakage once more and of course with the Kanoha 12 and Jinchurikis all involved in his coronation it was an event to remember. Then there was Tamari who simply planted a kiss on the Nara's cheek and told him to pick her up at 8 that night after she had grabbed Shikamaru during the events in Suna. Naruto had doubled over with laughter at the stunned look on Shikamaru's face. Shikamaru waved it off by muttering something about troublesome blondes before he went to get ready for his date with the Suna ninja doing his best to ignore the death glares Gara and Kankuro were sending his way. Itachi surprisingly had merged back into the village almost seamlessly once the truth of what really happened that night had been released and for the first year Sasuke always made sure to keep his older brother in sight, silently worried that if he took his eyes off Itachi he would disappear again, his mother hand mode as Naruto called it, this like usual ended up in a fistfight between the two, both having smiles on their faces by the end of it, only went up in degree while Itachi was in. Recovery from the surgery Tsunade successfully performed on him to heal his eyes. Kisame kept his promise and came by every so often to spar with the Uchiha brothers and help Sasuke tease slash Anoyatachi. 
Hitachi took his place as ANBU Taicho once more while Abito took up a position in the academy after Iraka saw how he inspired an academy girl who thought she would never live up to her family's exceptions the Chunin had dragged the Uchiha to Tsunade who agreed with the Chunin's strong words to give him a sensei position in the academy. Nagato, Konin, and Yahiko were in the village every so often as they had decided to not become ninjas again as they had decided to go travel the five nations to experience life to the fullest. When they did come back to Kanoha, they stayed in the flat Akira and Akito had stayed in, when they were in the village before they were revealed as Naruto and Shikamaru. The trio would help out around the village, using their skills to make tasks easier for ninjas and civilians both. Minato and Kushina had reopened the Namake's estate and had Naruto, Abito, who didn't want to intrude on Itachi and Sasuke's brother Nesabito's words, and Kakashi move in with them, reforming their family while Jiraiya stayed with his, finally, wife Tsunade and the other Senjus in the Senju estate. This included Yamato who Hashirama had tracked down as the man did have his DNA therefore he was family as far as the Shodai was confirmed, plus he wanted to spar with another Muton user. Shikamaru still lived in the Nara compound where Naruto and Asuma could be seen in regularly as Yoshino demanded to have the blonde around for meals at least twice a week and Chio wanted her Neronisan to play with her when he could while Asuma was there for his usual shogi games or cloud watching with Shikamaru. Shikamaru was snapped out of his musing by the huffing of Kurama as the now looking just exhausted as Naruto nine-tailed fox came into the clearing and dropped down by Naruto's side, burying his face in his paws. I hate children. How can they have so much energy? Karama huffed yawning widely, showing his sharp canine teeth. Ah, to be young. Naruto said dramatically. Ah, poor Naruto Gigi. Shikamaru teased, laughing as he blocked the whack from Naruto with his forearm. How is planning for the Chunin exams coming along? Naruto asked, pillowing his head on his arms that he had crossed behind his blonde hair. Much easier since I've done it a few times in the past before the war. Shikamaru admitted, not stressing out about every detail like he did in the past. Is Lady Tsunade still dropping hints about you becoming her successor? Yeah, she's dragging me to the annual Kage meeting, we've kind of turned it into a Jinchuriki meeting as well. Even through we see each other at least once a month, the Kages wanted us to come as I think most of them are grooming some of the Jinchurikis to take their places when the time comes. Naruto explained, a smile on his face as he thought about the meeting Tsunade told him about and how he had no choice but to come with her to it. So the allied shinobi forces is coming along nicely? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow as a shadow passed over them, waving down at the duo before disappearing. Very well also Fu and Shomei are fitting in Kanoha nicely. Kachan, Bachan and Mito Bachan have taken a liking to her. She practically lives at my house when she isn't out with Shino. Naruto smiled, having seen the shadow above them. Fu would much rather fly around with Komi's wings than walk anywhere if she had a choice. I'm glad she found a place she can call home. Shikamaru said thinking about the bubbly mint-haired girl who now sported a leaf Hitai 8 instead of a Taki 1. Even though we got grounded up until we are grandparents I think, no I know what we did was worth it. Naruto spoke up suddenly, Shikamaru tilted his head to the side slightly. Once things had settled down the two under a silent agreement had decided to live in the now and forget their future and work towards making a better and brighter one. So far they had very successful and life was good. Yami too Naru. Okage-sama, it's been an honor. Shikamaru turned his head to look at the blonde with a smile on his lips. Back at Yushika, no matter how troublesome it was. Naruto turned and smiled back at the Nara before the two lay on the grass hill where it all began again in companionable silence with Kurama dozing by Naruto's side. Ah, there you two are. Come on, we're meeting everyone for barbecue, remember? Ino called out as she found the duo resting on the hill about half an hour later. She glared at them from her one visible blue eye as the other eye was hidden under a long blonde bang, she crossed her arms tapping her foot as she waited for the two to move their butts. Why do I surround myself with such troublesome blondes? Shikamaru muttered to Naruto as the two stood up, the Jinchuriki grabbing Kurama before placing the nine tails on his head as per usual. Ino, Tamari, me. 
Yeah, you really are surrounded by blondes, clearly you attract them. Naruto laughed loudly after he ticked the three names off on his fingers. What are you two idiots talking about now? Actually, I don't want to know, just hurry up. Ino threw her arms in the air and started to drag the duo down the road. Finally, the group entered the restaurant where they were directed to the back room that was usually used for massive private parties, and the time travelers blinked in shock. Every single person they had known or fought beside were all located inside the room. Surprise! They all shouted at once, leaving the two gapping like goldfish at the sight before them. We never properly thanked either of you for doing so much for us, so this party is for both of you. Tsunade explained seeing the confused looks the large group was getting. Oh. Naruto said in understanding. You didn't have to. Shikamaru trailed off awkwardly as his girlfriend Tamari waltzed over, hooking her arm through his. We wanted to so stop standing there looking stupid and come eat. Tamari dragged the Nara over to the table, forcing him into a chair between Shikaku and Asuma, but across from her. You guys are the best. Naruto cheered, Kurama grumbled annoyed at the loud blonde. He dug his claws into the blonde's scalp before he leapt over to the blonde's girlfriend. Hinata giggled at the sight, but held her arms over for Kurama nonetheless laughing at the betrayed look Naruto was giving her for choosing Kurama over him. B laughed loudly at the sight, whacking Naruto on the back cheerfully. Naruto plastered a genuine grin on his face and dove head first into the party, sitting between his parents and across from his godparents. The party went till late that night as the two time travelers reminisced with those there from both timelines, told stories from their old timeline, the happy ones only, bantered slash had verbal fights. All in all Shikamaru and Naruto knew they had made the right choices when they came back to stop the war and they planned on doing everything they could to stop any fourth shinobi war from breaking out. The future was bright and they knew it.